All right. Hey, everybody. How's it going? I hope you're you're having a great uh, Friday or Saturday in uh, Daryl's case. Um, welcome to 365 Deep Dive. We're, we've got a big show today. We're going to talk a lot about um, Microsoft Loop and Into the Loopiverse. So we're, we're doing a, a little bit of a, a play on like where everything is. Loop is getting to be like pretty ubiquitous. We had a huge announcement with the Loop app on Wednesday. Was it that it got launched in private preview. So we thought this would be a great, you know, episode to bring on Daryl Webster and talk about all things loop and demo from the loop app. How are you doing guys? Hi, good afternoon. Welcome Daryl <laughs> to the show. Or I just say good, good, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, good now, <laughs> right now, wherever and whenever you are. <laughs> Yeah, it's seven o'clock in the morning for Daryl in New Zealand, and we were DMing with him at what was it, three o'clock in the morning, three thirty in the morning? About so, that. Yeah. Daryl's bright-eyed and bushy-tailed for us. So right it's, now. Uh, Maybe one later, p.m. So here much. in Kansas City. Yeah. Cool. Well, um, so Daryl, you had a, a really great video that you launched, like right whenever the Loop app. Uh, came out how's that video doing you, have you been uh, getting a lot of traction on well it? yeah it's up to about 5k views um i think oh, wow. what what helped actually was i also published a social video onto to twitter at the same time just to mm -hmm. lead people into that video and start the conversation uh, i've always found the the social channels to be a great place to start discussing things when it lands and uh, yeah, some great conversations, observations, and feedback about Loop uh, in those threads, definitely. Yeah, yeah, and you've been kind of prepping people. You know, I, I assume that you knew this was coming on uh, on Wednesday. You know, so you were you were prepping people for like the past week or two, saying, "Hey, you know, here's a, a guide for how to go in and do your um, your prep work for your tenant, so that you'll be ready to turn on the Loop app whenever it happens to arrive." You know, and then the morning of, it was like the the embargo lifted, you know, and That's you're able to get that published. So um, people who are in the know, if you don't follow Daryl already, I put a QR code up in the corner, which which direction is it? Up in the corner. <laughs> um, so if you're watching on a computer or on an iPad, you can just scan that with your phone and um, that will take you to Daryl's Twitter page so that you'll be in the know next time whenever uh, something, especially around Microsoft Loop or really anything productivity in Microsoft 365 comes out. So um, be sure to, to follow Daryl. So um, we, we decided that to talk about all things Loop, we we're gonna do something a little bit interesting today. Um, I'm gonna bring my screen on, on stage here. Uh, we decided like, let's run the agenda in a Loop workspace. So. Daryl, you know, kindly um, added us to his modern work mentor uh, template or tenant, and he created a workspace for us. And we've been filling it out for the past day or so, kind of like getting our thoughts and ideas, um, you know, kind of ready to go. And we wanted to start by talking about what is Loop and then go into like how to configure it. So if you haven't seen Daryl's video yet, um, we'll run through like, what switches you need to turn on to basically make the loop app functional in your organization. And then we wanted to dive into like, you know, using loop, using the loop app, but just also loop components in the various places that you can use it. Um, show some tips and tricks. Daryl's got a lot of experience using loop for weeks or months now at this point. Um, so he's going to share a lot of cool things that you can do that are kind of delighters before we get into talk about the, uh, the wish list. And like always, if you guys have questions, um, feel free to drop those in the comment field, whether you're watching on LinkedIn or Twitter or YouTube, we'll see those. And, um, you know, that's the benefit of doing live video like this is that we can have a dialogue and a conversation back and forth to, uh, you know, explore things and take it wherever you want to take it. So um, anything to add, guys? Is or should this we Christmas? just jump this on feels in? feels like Christmas. I've been waiting yeah, for this it since it was announced yeah. in like what fall 2021. Like I remember kind of behind the scenes learning about it and then the public announcement. And I'm like, yeah, I want this. And they're like, it's coming, it's coming. And in true mm -hmm. my fashion, they're like, it's coming 
in the fall and they just don't say like what year and you know it took a little while but after having been hands-on with it i'm even more excited now uh to yeah. use it than i was whenever they first uh, announced it i know I, it's it's kind of been the same for me too like they microsoft announced loop um i personally I hadn't really heard of this type of application. I don't know. Is is there a word for what Loop and Notion and Obsidian, like all that stuff, kind of is? Is there like a a Gartner chart yet for for this style of application? Mm. But I, no, I had I, never I, heard of this. You know, like having blocks or components. This kind of mm. like organic collaboration, organic, just like getting things onto a page uh, in a canvas type of layout, and. What it did for me, honestly, was it it made me learn about this like category of applications. So while we've been waiting on Loop, I personally have been like diving into Notion and using Notion a whole lot. Which now that we have Loop available, I feel like I have a little bit of a jump start into using this type of application. It's not, you know, no pun intended, a blank canvas that I'm staring at. I kind of know a little bit like what to do because I've kind of you know can speak the language a little bit. But um, I'm interested, like, from your perspective, Daryl, like, how have you been explaining what Loop is to people whenever you, <laughs> you know, kind of do your intro to what is Loop? Yeah, I, I try and dodge all the marketing um, terms and atomic units of productivity. I mean, it's nice. You can get poetic and start to think about those metaphors. And I guess, you know, that's that's where your mind goes. But mm -hmm. um, I try to explain it as it is a new form of Office document, or should I call it Microsoft 365 document? Sorry, for those in the know, that's a bit of a pain. Um, I, I call it that because that's really what it is underneath it. it is a, it's a fluid file, a fluid document, and that mm -hmm. becomes the collaborative canvas. So maybe I'd call all of these additional apps, Notion, Obsidian, etc., Miro, they're all collaborative canvases of sorts. They're live. You can share content mm -hmm. with them. You can bring people into them. And, uh, and Loop is that. Like, um, I think as I start to explain it, and we'll get into this in more detail, uh, it's, it's um, all about how you can take that sharing across other experiences and work from wherever you are. And uh, I, I mean, I'd also ask you guys too, like it was really interesting to see Microsoft launch the first experiences as um, loop experiences without an app. You know, like it mm -hmm. was it was this experience or a feature without an app and it was kind of hard for people to to adopt, wasn't it? Yeah, I think like it was a little bit um, a little bit confusing for me because, yeah, they announced um, loop components first, you know, so they're really leaning into the collaborative aspect of it, you know, mm. where when I came into something like Notion, I've come into it from a completely personal productivity perspective, right? Mm. And it was like, <clears throat> you know, Loop, it, it feels like from the beginning, Loop existed to get work done together and kind of remove friction and remove barriers to, you know what, we're having a chat in Teams and we just need like a quick table, you know, to, to jot down some stuff in like a, a structured layout. And it's like, it's friction and it's kind of like context shifting to say, okay, well, I'm going to go into Excel. I'm going to make the little table, even though I only need like three by five table size, then I'm going to save it. Then I'm going to paste it into the team's chat. So we can all add it to it together and all of that. It, it takes a lot of that friction out of it by just saying like, all right, I need a loop component. I need a table. And then we could type at the same time and we don't have to get out of the application to do it. So mm. I think it was like, it was, a big benefit right out of the gate, but it was really seen from my perspective as like a Teams type of feature. You know, it was very like, yeah. oh, it's in the umbrella of Teams. And if you listened a little bit closer to the the marketing folks talk about what this is, that wasn't what they intended, I don't think. They were saying, you know, it's going to be everywhere. It's going to be an Outlook and, and Teams, and it's going to be, you're going to interface with it through different, types of uh, applications, but because like the practicality of it was in teams, I think it's kind of had this stigma for the past year of being like mm. a team specific feature, you know, and I think by getting the app out there, it really is going to kind of differentiate it and show that like, Hey, it's kind of this underlying 
new collaborative architecture that the apps can take advantage of, right? These are just uh, places where it's surfaced. So yeah. I, I think it's pretty interesting to see it kind of come together. Um, what I'm hopeful for is that like they'll, they've, they've got a big wave of like attention right now. I'm hoping that we'll see fast iteration to make that app, you know, more and more mature as we go. So I'll tell you when they first introduced it, my very first comment was I have the notion this is going to be huge. And the pun was intended because I had seen and I'd mm -hmm. worked with Notion a little bit, but I come from the SharePoint world and then I moved into personal productivity with OneNote. And I think this is helping to mm -hmm. address one of the biggest frustrations that I think we've had with, um, with OneNote. And that's kind of the collaborative part of, of OneNote, the collaboration and some of the sync issues. Now, to that team's mm -hmm. credit, they've done a lot of work over that uh, on the back end of that, especially over the last couple of years. But that's an application that was, you know, it's 20 years old. And this is kind of the evolution of some of that. Um, I know we've got uh, kind of a what is loop table uh, that we'll we'll talk about here in a, in a moment. But mm -hmm. for me, like, I think this is the the way that I can start something and then extend it into the other parts of where I work. And it minimizes the friction in order to do that. It gives me a central mm -hmm. place to kind of come back to if I can't quite remember where something is. And then I can push it and meet people where they work. And that's a new mm -hmm. concept. Like that's taking information that like note taking, that's kind of a personal thing. But like if I'm jotting down ideas with somebody in like a one note notebook, and then I need to go and reference that somewhere else, there's a barrier to do that. And this kind of breaks down that barrier so that we can kind of meet in one place, go and work in our different places and still reference something back in like that one place. And I think that's a really um, a new way of, of, of approaching some of this. And mm. it's really cool the way that they're they're meeting this. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, I think, uh, key, really key, Andy and John, you've picked up on it too. Um, yeah. Loop is about removing those barriers. Uh, I know like it's deceptively simple when you add that component to a team's chat or to Outlook and other places that we can do that today. Um, but that's the point. It's like, don't mm -hmm. get distracted by what font, what this, what that, even, you know, other buttons or, or things, just get your ideas out there and start building on it and worry about formatting and form later. And that's why the, mm -hmm. the components that we had initially for these first experiences where you're in a chat, I'm going to give you five choices that you might want to use while you're in a chat, a bullet list, a table or something else. Mm -hmm. um, those are the components that get our ideas going and started quickly um, and remove those barriers so that you can just quickly get that idea out there quickly loop people in, share that content across other places mm -hmm. yeah daniel anderson i've got his his <laughs> comment up from linkedin he says you know the term collaborative canvas that you've used is mm -hmm. is really resonating well with the people that he's talked to and i think that's a really good way to kind of explain it like um people kind of get like the digital whiteboard space and this is a little bit more structured than that because it's it's yeah. a little bit more linear but um, it's very fast to be able to get like a new component added and, and they've got a nice set. I, I hope to see it expand here pretty soon, but, um, you know, there's good functionality there. That's a little bit more conducive to like us with mouse and keyboard, you know, rather than having like a full digital whiteboard type of space, it, but still leans into that like collaborative canvas. Um, <clears throat> Daryl, you've got a really good picture right here at the bottom. I think you pasted this in. Um, I think this is from your, your video, right? About um, like what the components of the Loop app are. I've got Loop yeah. open right now, but do you kind of want to talk through like what we're seeing on the screen and kind of like the basic yeah, navigation? Sure. Uh, and just, you know, to help, help that focus, uh, let's show uh, um, one of those features. Um, at the top of the uh, page mm -hmm. panel, just tuck away the, um, uh, the page list. Top right corner mm -hmm. up there, that's the one. Cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, look, yeah, I think uh, <clears throat> like with all apps, it helps to orient yourself with what you're seeing and, and what you're using. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, looking at Loop, um, your first experience of it when you do sign in, and I, I tried this yesterday too when I was signing in with a Microsoft account, boom, you're into this getting started workspace, which – is nicely mapped out to show you how to use it, what to use it for. 
And um, like I've tried to follow the colors of the loop logo as we kind of go one from one right through to seven. Um, mm -hmm. Just trying to point that detail out. That's the kind of stuff I do. Um, that uh, your, your page list and uh, where you've got your pages, you're going to start out with a loop mm -hmm. workspace if you create one and it is just a blank page. That can be kind of overwhelming. But as you build it out, this is where it does kind of feel like OneNote that uh, mm -hmm. some of us who have got into it, I know Kurt and... Um, Marjorie, Marjolyn, Marilyn, sorry, um, a, a, you know, long time OneNote uh, users, they're watching the stream here. You've got pages and sub pages, you've got sections, and, and mm -hmm. that's the kind of pattern that we've been used to following. So that makes sense to use that uh, within a, a workspace to, to pull our ideas together and organize them. Uh, the top of the, the, top of the um, panel there on the left, you've, you've got a mm -hmm. um, uh, place to look at your notifications. We've already sort of tucked away the the page to yeah. kind of focus view and search. Um, look, let's, let's just comment on these things because otherwise I could just get onto a real like <laughs> rant as yeah. well. Um, yeah, I've had these notifications in the top. So yeah. you were adding, you were like at mentioning me yesterday. Uh -huh. And yep, so yep. I left that bell unread so that we could show that today that, you know, it's got its own notification engine. Yeah. So you'll see whenever you've been mentioned somewhere and then yep. you can filter that based off of what's read or not read. So I can jump into like Daryl mentioned me in this page down here. I click on it. It jumps me to where I was mentioned and it highlights that, you know, in purple. And because of that, you know, it, it's not unread anymore. Right. Mm. So Andy, he mentioned me over here and then Daryl, he just mentioned me on the agenda. So mm. as I'm clicking on these, they're falling out of my unread count. So I can filter back and forth between two of those. And I kind of like that. It's, it's a lot like how, um, how teams is, mm. uh, where it's, it's tucked up out of the way. It's the same, you know, kind of general UI element, you know, that you're used to in like teams and yammer and all that. Um, mm. I didn't hear a notification bell though. So it's that? not quite as, you know, re like <laughs> real time as teams where you get the ping, you know, if somebody like thumbs up or something like yeah. that. I don't think I would want an audible uh, a noise notification personally. Yeah, I mean, what would that sound like? Would it be like a, you know, sort of loopy sound? I don't know. I mean, the, hopefully the, the not. The little bell for the task would be done. Yeah, hopefully not that crazy sound that we heard uh, when we were testing forms in meetings. <laughs> right. It was like that, that yeah. like space laser yeah. <laughs> noise. That was odd. <laughs> but yeah, it was, I just wanted to point out that like I didn't hear a sound when I got mentioned. You know, so keep track of that. Uh, yeah. I'm curious, though. Let me open up another. Let me just go to like Bing.com. Um, can you at mention me? I want to see like, does it flash the, uh, oh, okay. the tab or anything like that? Yeah. Uh, or do yeah, I let me John. click off of off of edge. I'm wondering, like, does a pop up notification come up or anything like no, that no, in the no, browser? No. So nothing like that. Um, what we're seeing today is okay. you'll see notifications in the app. But I think the more powerful thing is when you're mentioned within um, the yeah. notification email. Um, and, you know, maybe you could, uh, I know you've, mm -hmm. you've got a fresh account there, so feel free to jump onto an open tab and open up outlook.com. Um, yeah. But that notification, it's embedding the loop component. So when mm -hmm. you go in to see, oh, where was I mentioned? What was I doing? Or mm -hmm. who's been talking to me? You're taking yeah. directly to the content. And that's so engaging because it's mm -hmm. right there, it's live, and you're going to contribute to it because you just can't help it. It's right there. There's John. Yeah, and yeah. this is something that's really new. I noticed, I saw this like in one of the blog posts, I think that this was a fairly new feature added on that it used to give you a link to the loop component and it would take you to that like dot fluid file. But now mm -hmm. it's rendering it inside of the email. So I can go in here, I can add right to it without having to again do that context switching this cuts down on that i can mm. vote on andy's thing i can vote on daryl's and uh you know it's a lot like how like yammer was was like you get a yammer notification when you click on it now it gives you the latest and greatest comments you can like and add comments and things like that without jumping away from the email mm. you know getting out of your way i think is is really beneficial you know yeah yeah um, if I may, I'd like to, that tour. Yeah, go ahead, Andy. <laughs> I'd like to yeah. just address kind of an elephant in the room. And this right here, I think, really demonstrates uh, that, that particular point. I'm going to bring my screen up 
Yeah, man. So this is a tweet from one of the engineers that actually worked on the product. This this was a uh, mm-hmm. Twitter thread that was released. I found it last night, shared it with you guys. Really hit, uh, interesting about the history. But the first thing people say when they see Loop is like, it's a Notion clone. And admittedly, they own up to that. But what you just showed is where it, its capabilities extend beyond what Notion is currently capable of. The fact that we were just inside of Outlook working with a loop component that started inside of a loop workspace, it's fully mm-hmm. collaborative in both, uh, both, um, uh, both, uh, <laughs> both ways. And mm-hmm. uh, uh, based off of the you know, Microsoft security, and, and we'll talk about that stuff in, in just a little bit, but that ability to extend it beyond the workspace, I think is, is, is huge. And we just saw mm-hmm. that in that demo. But I just wanted to bring this up. They do own up to, you know, admittedly, uh, there is a, uh, a lot of similarities with Notion. Yeah, it's pretty notiony. Yeah, but like it's also important to keep in mind that like Notion's been at it for what, like six years or something, <laughs> you know. So um, naturally, I guess yeah, it's going to be a little bit more mature. I'm personally not ready to switch over yet. You know, <laughs> I still have to like I've put a lot of structure into my mm-hmm. setup, but you know, it's something to keep an eye on as they, you know, as both of them mature, and like I, f- I imagine there's going to be like a cutover point where it's like ah, enough is there for me. Um, yeah so i guess that kind of naturally leads into the second point which is where can you use microsoft loop we saw that you can use it in outlook like if you're mentioned in a loop component you get an outlook notification um you can also insert a loop component into that notific into outlook as well so like if i go here and i click these dot dot dots i'm going to share this whole page as a loop component right so i'm going to make it portable and i'm going to take it and go put it into teams or outlook or whatever well do that do that john yeah Um, that works the other way around yeah is like i can go into like a new email here and i can send daryl an email and say you know check this out and then i can slap that in and again it's going to render that and i can send that off to daryl so i don't have to mention him in loop I can go through my traditional communications route as well as I can do that from teams.microsoft.com, which is a new tenant. This is my first time launching Teams on this browser. So <laughs> let's see the welcome page that comes up on it. Um, okay, I get into the web version here. <clears throat> but, you know, I copied and pasted that. It's still available in my clipboard, so I should just be able to paste it inside of this group chat so daryl and andy we've got this going he's put let me get out of this he's put a loop component in there i can paste the whole page as a loop component does that render out nope it didn't render out on that one but i could Hmm. do the loop components and i could add a new loop component right here as well um daryl did you copy and paste this one in because this is from our yeah totally yeah so i use the share the share component um yeah yep Yeah, I don't know. It's not working for me on this one, but I wonder this if it's like it's something to do with the whole page or something instead. If I go in and say like, all right, let's grab that component that you had going right here. Then I could uh, click on this, create a loop right. component, which is going to make it portable to make it be able to come out. So I can copy that guy, copy it, paste it into the chat. Yeah, it's still not rendering for me, but it worked Maybe from there. Maybe it's because you're in your he's, account. Yeah, he's more <laughs> native, I guess. But yeah, the whole page is there from where Daryl uh, copied and pasted it. It worked from Outlook for me, though, so that's something. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So where it's available, we've seen already like Microsoft Teams. You could do it in chat. You, can you add a loop component or loop page as a tab yet? I would imagine no, you can no, just yet. as like a website, but it's not going to be stored with the team is the Correct. important thing to call out. Yeah, yeah. I think um, like early workarounds, you know, when the loop component experience would open up in the office.com page and it was, mm-hmm. it was, you know, there was no loop app experience. It was just kind of just this canvas and what you could do with text. So that's mm-hmm. what some were, were doing early on to bring loop content into Teams. 
but that mm -hmm. native experience where we would like to see a workspace as a tab uh, in a channel, for example. And we know that's something that they're definitely working on because it's, I mean, imagine that experience of being able to work together with three or four people and just getting mm -hmm. something done in a team and a channel. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's not there yet. Yeah, so it does work as a um, as a page or like as a tab for a website. So what I did was I hit the plus button, I mm. added a new website, and I pasted in our component link we've been working with. Mm. So I have been able to say, hey, here's our loop page, and you see that it renders like the whole app inside. So that's something yeah. to keep in mind is like you've got a sidebar here and then another sidebar. You're getting into loopception <laughs> here a little yep. bit, you know, uh, like – like we said in the title, we're entering the loop averse, right? Where you're like getting a little bit embedded, a little bit deeper here and there. But I do have a live, you know, loop app linked to inside of Teams. But as you said, it, it's not stored with this group chat. This is still mm. stored in the workspace, wherever the workspace happens to be located. So that's important to point out. Um, we showed Outlook. Also, Microsoft Word and Microsoft Whiteboard, you're able to, again, just paste in that component link and be able to use this inside of Word and Whiteboard. Hopefully, it would be coming soon to things like PowerPoint or uh, OneNote, things like that. I think probably the biggest one people would be wanting is OneNote, um, but it's not quite there yet, right? It was announced a year ago. Um, they officially announced that in February of 2022, that Luke would be coming to OneNote soon. So we're still waiting on that one. Okay. Yeah. I, that's going to be a really big win because it's really going to stitch that like that note taking and the loop component of that collaborative canvas together. Um, mm -hmm. We're already getting a little bit of the collaborative canvas from a drawing perspective with loop integrated. So like I've got, here's my whiteboard that I just created. If I paste in, it knows that it's a loop component. So you can see it's rendering it out right now. And I've got that loop component next to my ability to draw, you know, and I'm going to try to draw with my, my thing, but you'd be able to put like a voting table or something like that in here. Um, <clears throat> one thing I've noticed though, is you can't create the loop component on the whiteboard. So you would be creating it somewhere else and just copying it into the whiteboard. Hopefully mm. someday we'll see that as like maybe a button over here on the side. Perhaps. Oh, it's about a month or two away, John. Yeah. So it's in it's okay. in the message center. It's coming. Okay, cool. Yeah. Hopefully that'll that'll render here as like uh, insert a loop component. What mm -hmm. do you want? I want a voting table, and you just slap it onto the whiteboard. Um, that would be a big win. Right now it's copy and paste. So about a month away though, according to to Daryl, and I'm sure that Microsoft would never delay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the the other like main entry points for me for loop are uh, the web, obviously, that's going to be loop.microsoft.com. You do need some tenant configuration that we'll talk about here in a second um, to get that to show up. So if you're in a tenant that doesn't have it activated, um, you're going to see a message that says like loop is not enabled for your organization mm. when you go to that main uh, page. Once you're in loop.microsoft.com, if you're on edge, you could go up to this, you know, the browser navigation and see that little like, kind of boxes with a plus sign, that is how you would install it as a progressive web application. So you can run Loop as like a standalone, quasi standalone application. Um, that's what I've done. I've added it to my dock on Mac OS that way. And then there are mobile apps available as well. So I wanted to point that out. Um, we can throw this John, in the chat. John, can I make a comment about the, the PWA yeah. thing? Um, ahead, what we found, and this is just, you know, with us launching it internally um, at WM Reply, we're you know trying to uh, get people on board for the private preview. Mm -hmm. um, one of those frequent comments was, "Oh yeah, I'm, I'm probably not using it as much as I as I could, because it's just one of those mini tabs that's open in your browser, and so you don't think about it. But mm -hmm. when you do install it as a progressive web app, a you know browser app, it has more presence on your desktop, and so it's one of the things that I will start." As, as an app during my day, it's Teams, it's it's Loop, it's Outlook mm -hmm. in some form, and and at least it's there, so it's ready for me to, to jump in and, and collaborate or take notes. Yeah. Um, I wanted to point out, you know, the conversation in the chat that's going on. I'm trying to keep up. You know, we, we want to, like, pop them on screen, but um, I see you guys are talking like crazy, which is really exciting. 
Um, and Phil, especially thanks for like answering questions in the chat. Um, you know, one of our good friends, Phil, he's like helping us out with, with the chat a lot. So we appreciate that. Um, but yeah, on the mobile apps, I, uh, I pasted into the chat. If you're watching on YouTube, um, iOS is available now, but it's available in test flight. So you will have to install the test flight application and then you'd be able to click a button um, to install it on your iPhone. It's important to note that it's iPhone only. I did install it on my iPad, but it's like kind of shrunk down because it's just a phone app right now. Um, but Daryl helpfully pointed out to me that, hey, you can just go to Safari or go to Edge on your iPad and get the full experience, you know, because it's a browser application. Um, for Android, I put the aka.ms link in there. Also, if you're watching on a computer, go ahead and scan that QR code with your Android phone and um, I'll make it bigger for you. Go ahead and scan that and uh, you'll be able to install it on your Android phone as well. Um, so anything else to add about like where you can get to loop and, and stories about like where it's, it's being used? I guess I have one question. Um, Daryl, you've been using this for a while. When you install it as a progressive web app, does it give you notifications on the taskbar or, or your mm. your doc? Does it do that? Or yeah, the I'm notification not engine like a, out there. I'm not seeing the red dot or anything like that to say you've been notified. Um, okay. So yeah, I mean it's it's email notifications at the moment, um, mm -hmm. and if you're in the app, you're going to see you know a little notification dot. Uh, I would hope that when we see it more integrated within Teams that it potentially becomes an item in your activity feed, you know, much like mm -hmm. other things as well. Yeah. There's a good question from Maris in here that says, um, Hey, how can I use this with a private office account? Like it keeps telling me I need to use like a school or a work account. Do you know the story about mm -hmm. that yet? Yeah. Um, what, what some people are finding is they're trying it out uh, as a loop mobile app on their phones and it's only work or school accounts that are supported there, but a personal yeah. Microsoft account is supported within the web browser. Okay. Okay. So it's, it's kind of getting there, <laughs> Yeah. but yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting to, to find out. It's, it's funny. Cause like some things roll out and it's like, you can only use an MSA and then some mm. things it like wants the school or work account like uh, Microsoft designer is one of those we're in preview for Microsoft designer right now, but you can only use a consumer Microsoft account uh, with designer mm. at this point. So, okay. So I guess moving on then into configuring the tenant for Microsoft loop. Um, there's a great video from Daryl that I posted here at the top. And I hope that you're seeing like, that we've created these with some structure, right? So like I'm using like the header two right here. I'm using a link component. Um, I've got another link to another one and then some like steps to do it. So we're kind of like trying to demonstrate the application as we go through talking points, but I just pasted in Daryl's video to the chat. I think it's been shared a couple times already. So step one, go watch Daryl's video. Don't, don't leave now. But go watch it after the, after this, and you can set up your tenant. Um, the second link is right here. I'm going to paste this into the chat, and this is the step by step guide. You know, the more the more nerdy of us, you know, that they want to read rather than watch a video, um, they they've got step by step what you need to do. And then I've kind of summarized this for you as well. So basically, you got two areas that you need to go to. The first is config.office.com you're going to create a, a configuration policy and you're going to scope it to a, a list of users. I know Phil said they're doing like a very limited uh, pilot in his organization. So you probably want to start out small, grow from there. Um, but you want to give it the ability to create and view files in Microsoft apps. That would cover you for like Microsoft Word. You want to add the uh, configuration. You want to enable that configuration for loop files and Outlook. Obviously, that's going to give it to you in email. And then the last one is create and view loop files in loop, which sounds a little bit redundant, but this is the loop application. So this one, item C, that's what lights up the loop app for your organization. And Daryl, you said in your video, it can take about a day, like 24 hours for mm, this to worst. apply. You know, maybe a couple hours, mm -hmm. something like that on average, but you might wait up to a day. 
Yeah. Um, the second main component is to do it inside of Microsoft Teams. So the way you do it in Teams is with PowerShell. You go in and you run the set SPO tenant commandlet. And what you're looking to do is you're looking to do is loop enabled. You're going to set that to dollar sign true. And then is collaborative meeting notes fluid enabled, which uh, just rolls off the tongue. You want that to be dollar sign true as well. So <laughs> did I catch everything, uh, Daryl and Andy? Yeah. I mean, I think you caught one that I'd, I'd forgotten on my video, which was that collaborative meetings one. And that's, oh, that's yeah. just making sure it's available for your group chats uh, that are part of your mm. private meetings. Yeah. And, you know, you can see from the word here that that probably means that with the new note experience that's coming, hopefully, you know, we'll have like collaborative agenda, collaborative action items, those types of things. You know, they've got it right there in the name meeting right in that attribute. So, um, and that summary was brought to you by John Chat GPT. <laughs> yeah, right. Really? <laughs> it's like I'm, I'm thinking. As I'm writing the words out of my mouth, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's the funny thing about chat GPT and all these like generative AIs is like watching it type. And sometimes it kind of stalls for a second and then it types more. It's like, it feels like it's actually thinking, you know? <laughs> so that covers uh, configuring your tenant for Microsoft Loop. Let's go back to the agenda here. And uh, something else I wanted to point out just because it popped into my mind, I'm like running a, a hundred miles an hour is you see everybody's face right here. So I can see where me, Daryl and Andy, we're all in this location right now, but you see that Andy is also down here and Daryl's also down here. And what we have found is that whenever you're in loop in a different like end point, I guess endpoint would be the best word for it. So if Daryl happens to have an email open that has this loop embedded in it, this loop component, <laughs> he might be here in the loop app, but he will also be here via Outlook. And Andy, he might be viewing this page on his phone, but he's viewing the agenda on his computer. So, you know, you might see people in more than one place, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, it's getting into the loop averse concept again of like, you know, it's not a glitch. Don't, don't, you know, freak out about it. It probably means that like these components are getting spread out into the sphere of Microsoft 365. Yeah. So it's going to be natural. You're going to see somebody's face show up twice, potentially. I want to um, be in everything, everywhere, all at once, John. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that's, that's kind of what we're getting to. Um, so have you gotten feedback about that? I know you've been testing it like at your organization, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't have people think it complained actually... about that at all or no, anything? No, no, not, not so much. Um, uh, it, it's uh, okay. So what's the, what's the main benefit of seeing someone's face there on a page or in the workspace? It is, Hey, you're not alone right now. Um, mm -hmm. in your asynchronous work or synchronous work, um, uh, there's someone here right there working there with you. And I think one thing that, um, it also uh, helps mm -hmm. us to, to, uh, work with is this, now, rather than sharing our screens, we're kind of doing this a bit more now. Rather than sharing our screens, we're keeping like a, mm -hmm. a meeting open with that full gallery. We're looking at people. But over on our second monitor, if we're lucky enough to have one of those, we just open up the app. And in this collaborative mm -hmm. um, canvas kind of way of working, we don't yet have curses, but we do this in Loop. We can do this in Excel and um, all sorts of things. We can see mm -hmm. where we're working based on the curses or what we've selected. And so in a meeting where, you know, we're, we're working together, we don't share the loop on screen. We just follow where people are. I can see that Daryl's now presenting from this page. So let's all mm -hmm. go there. And I can see when he selects a, a paragraph or a text or a cell in a table. So I'll follow along with that. Now, we're, we're kind of waiting mm -hmm. for that cool feature that's landed in Whiteboard now. Um, you know the one I'm talking about, John? <sighs> Follow no. me, follow me. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. Duh. Yeah. The follow me feature. Yeah. I, I have that down as a wish list item that I think that would be really cool to be able mm -hmm. to like, you know, see the pointer. Um, like right now I can see Andy's typing because you get that traditional co-authoring, but with whiteboard, mm -hmm. you get the actual pointer, you know, it's like a triangle shape. Yep. Um, but then, yeah, you said like, 
to be able to present it. We ran into that just yesterday where we ended up just sharing our screen because I was like pointing to something with my cursor, but you guys didn't see mm. I was pointing. You know, it'd be nice to do follow me. And naturally, if you do follow me, then you're probably going to need to add a laser pointer to to this, right? Because like I want to be able to circle this with my pointer to kind of show this well, is what yeah. I'm talking about, you know? I mean, I know it was Buzz video and this was two years ago. <laughs> But remember, yeah. the cursors were there. Yeah, and they're the same styled cursors that actually have showed up in whiteboard. Yeah, you know that that common design language. Um, something that I've noticed, though, like you guys, if you were watching um, while we were talking about follow me, Andy was typing up here, and he's yeah. in this cell, which in like in Excel, e x c e l l, inside of Microsoft Excel. I would be locked out of that cell, right? Because he's like, he's editing that cell. But you can see he's editing it. And I was changing his spelling and like adding things while he is currently in it typing. So like three of us are in a single cell of a table typing. So you don't even have those types of like, you know, traditional um, limitations that we've had with the office applications until now. I don't know if that's powered by like Project Nucleus or something like that to to give like more seamless uh, real time editing, but it feels way faster than what we've mm. known, you know, three years ago with co-authoring. Who wants um, to get geeky? <clears throat> go on. So there's a blog post where they talk about some of the architecture and how some of this is actually built. And it's based off of the way that they have restructured this inside of SharePoint. Part of the reason that uh, mm -hmm. it's taken a while for this app to be released and, if you didn't know, this app's actually been in, or Loop's actually been in development for like six years. Um, they wow. needed to do significant re-architecting on the back end. Some of that affected SharePoint and how files were stored and um, versus uh, using like a kind of a, a traditional file storage structure. They're actually using a tree-based architecture with nodes and it allows for more, um, uh, I think I believe it's a horizontal um uh, connections um, between those nodes versus like the traditional structure. So there was a lot of work mm -hmm. that went on on the back end to make this possible. And that work is extended into many of the other applications. That's why you're going to see, I think, more mm -hmm. of the uh, Fluent framework and Fluent UI um, uh, moving across. And some other apps have already been built out of it, like Whiteboard. But it's because of the way mm -hmm. that they're handling some of the architecture on the back end. They can now allow more real-time collaboration like this, whereas before, like kind of a standard mm -hmm. structure, it was built on um, traditional like databases. And so like when a row inside of the database was like locked down for anything by one user, it made it really hard or impossible for another user to access some of that same stuff. Mm -hmm. I like the geeky stuff. Yeah, it's so fast, like, and so like pun intended uh, fluid to use this inside of the same, we're not locking each other out, things like that. Um, you know, I hope to see this this type of thing come across, especially in like I don't want to throw any you know particular note taking uh, solutions under the bus, but like it's so painful to have to wait for a sync to happen when you're taking notes collaboratively, and this is just so mm. much smoother. Um, there's a really good question here in the chat that says, "Does that negate version control if multiple people are editing inside of the same place?" Have you looked at version control very much, uh, Daryl? Well, ver version control um, history. Yeah, it's well, yeah. That's actually the new feature, uh, bringing that actually into the product. Whereas beforehand, um, if it was just a loop page um, with components, you could you could get there too. So you're seeing mm -hmm. all, all the different versions of of this page that that we have been working on, and we can roll back and compare and restore. Uh, mm -hmm. But the other cool thing, if you actually go into what page are we all on there? This is still the, we're agenda. In the agenda. Yeah. Yeah. So go go into the cell where we're all working on the copilot stuff and start okay. hovering over some of the text. Um, you'll actually see attribution. So click onto Andy GPT, for example. Yeah, I see um, like Daryl typed that. Yeah. Andy GPT. That Hover was over. Andy and yeah. Daryl have messed then with that click one. On that. Exactly. Just now, yeah. just now. And it's got um, a win. Oh, okay. So I can't necessarily roll back that section. That's up here in version history, and you're rolling back the whole page for that. But you yeah. can see, like, since we got started, there's only been, what, like three new major versions of this page that you would be, like, restorable. 
Um, but yeah, if you can see like who who said that, you can go look there and see their name. Yeah, that's yep, pretty helpful. Exactly. That's nice. Um, I like that attribution. Uh, I've just taken yeah. off the highlighting on that text because it was hiding something um, that actually you can see too. Then when you hover over, okay. um, you can see, yeah. okay, this is what Andy said, but then I hover over John's contribution. So I've already mm -hmm. done that. Sorry. You just people near me. Into, That's uh, cool. I haven't seen that before. People near me. Sorry. Yeah. So like Andy is here, oh, yeah. right? And I can mm -hmm. see that you guys are there. So when I right clicked on this, there's a new, like this fly that says people who are near me. And you can mm -hmm. see that list also inside of the, uh, the contextual click as well. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so like, clicking on uh, a word where Andy was working, but we, we also contributed, you can expand mm -hmm. on that version. So Andy GPT, um, mm -hmm. and then just select yourself, your own your own contribution to that. Mm -hmm. you see oh, it's it highlighting exactly. what was typed. Oh, yes. that's rad. Yeah, because like, so Daryl, he made it two words, Andy space GPT. Mm -hmm. But Andy was the one who typed the whole sentence. And I just changed the word fast because he misspelled it. I put an apostrophe and I put a, a hyphen. Mm. Oh, man, that's cool. Really so, yeah, granular. you can kind of see it stepping up. So it's oldest to newest. The oldest is at the bottom. The newest is at the top. Yep. That's awesome. Yep. So now I can definitively man. prove I did not, in fact, say that. <laughs> Somebody yeah. else collaborated on my document and added yep. to that thing. So you need to take that, highlight it, and then screenshot that where it's like, okay, Daryl's the one that put a space there. <laughs> Dude, that's rad. That's that's what I love about these like 365 deep dive. Like we've got a basic structure of what we're talking about, but we're also just like learning crap along the way <laughs> together. That's super cool. Um Nice. So we've gone off the rails a little bit talking about like <laughs> the the features specifically, <laughs> but what about like Loop and Copilot? Do we have a a page for Loop and Copilot? I don't think uh, we do. We have a page. Don't we got we? a page about uh, version history. No, so we, don't. we just talked about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah we, so I just yeah I just added that in response. But Copilot yeah. at the moment I I've seen it working in uh, some of the early stuff that, that we have access to as loop creators, but um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it? if you go to, show to you guys the... where that's at, you go to settings up here in the top corner and then experiments, mm. you can turn on the jumpstart workspace option that is available now. So that gives you like some, some suggestions when you're creating your workspace, but then copilot is grayed out right now because they're at capacity. But that's where you're going to be able to get like, you know, hey, Copilot, give me, you know, two paragraphs about this. Give me some ideas for a YouTube video uh, title, things like that. And it'll just like spit out text for you. So um, for those of you that are tuning more. in and just hearing about Copilot for the first time, Microsoft recently had a huge announcement about the Copilot service uh, as part of mm -hmm. Microsoft 365. The Copilot service acts as a like a, a processing engine, a universal translator between you, a user, and some kind of prompt or request to retrieve information. Copilot mm -hmm. connects to the Microsoft Graph and looks for things that are recent and relevant and um, associated with you in the Microsoft world. It creates a prompt from that, and it connects to a large language model. And the one that Microsoft is using is OpenAI's GPT-4 uh, and ChatGPT. It gets mm -hmm. the response back from that uh, ChatGPT, and it goes through the co-processing in a service once again, uh, connects back to the graph to follow up with the information the, that it needs, and then it sends the results of that back to you. So you could summarize a response. So you could say, hey, um, I need you to summarize uh, a report based off of uh, this new product, Widgets uh, Mark Three that we're working on. And it will gather that information from the Microsoft Graph. It will summarize and create a response for it, double check the graph information, and send that back to you. They uh, showed um, Copilot in a, in a bunch of demos with like Word, uh, Outlook, Excel, PowerPoint, mm -hmm. OneNote, and it's going to be 
here inside of Microsoft Loop. Uh, to say that I'm excited about Copilot is an understatement. Um, I think that is yeah. <laughs> revolutionary. <laughs> so I had to interject on that one because yeah, uh, definitely keep your eyes on Copilot. Definitely follow Andy for for a lot of things about AI. He's he's been spending so many hours every day, um, just immersed <laughs> in AI. And yeah, to his point, it was announced uh, the same day, right? Yeah, so March 22nd, the same day the app was announced in public preview, they also announced that, oh, by the way, Copilot's coming here too. Um, and this is just a couple of pictures of like what you're going to be able to see. So you're going to be able to have a prompt inside of a loop component where you'll be able to say, I want to create something. I want you to describe some text already on there, summarize it for me, stuff like that. And here's just like an animated GIF of what that looks like. So you'd be able to like, you know, activate it. And what's really cool is that um, it's it's the first place that I've seen the collaborative co-pilot, if that's what you can call it, where multiple people are like prompting the engine inside of this collaborative canvas. So you can see that like, you know, this person started out with like, hey, give us a, an agenda, a, an outline. And then somebody else pro, uh, proposed like, well, give us some more details. And then the other person said, well, turn it into a different format called an agenda. And like they're going back and forth and they're giving that that AI component, they're they're giving that commands and it has the context from the other person before them. So that's what's really cool is it's, uh, I'm coming up with the right word to say, a shared context, right? You have the shared context within that generative AI, which is really, really cool. Um, so yeah, we'll paste this in the chat as well for you guys if if one of the guys haven't done it already. But that's the um, the article. Yeah, I see Andy put it in the chat already. And there's some FAQs about like, okay, how do I get it? Where is it going to be? It's going to surface as a, a component in and of itself called Copilot. So that's I have really a feeling cool. we'll be circling back around with a deep dive on Copilot as soon as we're able to get hands on it. Yeah, like many co-pilot <laughs> D sessions, I think it's just so broad. Holy cow. Um, it was, it was pretty game changing to watch that demo um, and see it like in more than just sizzle reel, like see actual demonstrations, you know, it feels like they're way, way closer than a, what a lot of times Microsoft is when they make an announcement. It feels like that's further off. I think we're going to see co-pilot sooner than what we saw loop, for example. Um, Here's hoping. Yeah. Yeah, I hope so. I know you're you're uh waiting every day <laughs> to see it light up. <laughs> so I'm gonna Pins mark that needles. as complete and uh go on through. We already talked about where you can use loop. Um and then the loop components. We talked about that. Is there anything else you guys want to cover on loop components themselves? I guess there's a couple new ones that I thought was really interesting. I'm gonna make a new page. Um, so to insert a loop component, the shortcut for that is going to be a forward slash. It's the one that's falling forward. And this is where you kind of get that like contextual menu that comes up. And ever since like 2021, we've had headings and tables and checklists and different types of lists. But now we have, um, two new ones that I've seen, which is the voting table and the progress tracker. So the voting table is really cool. I see this being useful in a meeting, especially where you can have like, what is your idea? Advocate for it. You know, let's brainstorm some pros and cons and then let people vote for it. And you get to see who voted for what. Um, so that's a really interesting component. I'm wondering, Daryl, do you know if there's any configuration about like, can we make that voting anonymous? It doesn't look like we can. No, nothing like that yet. Um, you okay. know, you're on the page, so so you, you've kind of voted. Um, That's true. You uh, kind of see what you know what people are doing as yeah. they're doing it because it's collaborative. <laughs> yeah, um, but that's a really cool one because it's just structure for pros and cons. And really, you could have done this with a table, and then you could have had them put like emojis in or something like that. But it's a nice vote button which has like a counter. Um, the other one that that Daryl's adding right now that you guys have seen me use is labels. So if I go down here and I add a new one, I do sports slash and then a label. This gives you the ability to have like a progress tracker or priority 
or you can add a new label if you want to. So like, mm -hmm. um, say that we're editing, like we're brainstorming an editorial calendar, right? So I'm going to do like a uh, content type. And are we going to do this as a, well, Viva engage post? I almost said Yammer. Um, Viva engage. Are we going to do this as a SharePoint news post? Um, are we going to do a video in stream? Are we going to do a live event in teams? And I can save that. And now for this workspace, I've got a new label type where I can say like, all right, this is going to be a news post. And I can flag that little like label or that little cell right here by embedding a label into the cell. I can say Viva Engage and the status of it is label. The status of it is in progress, right? So you John, can add what these you want to flags. do here on that is actually, yeah. Um, you sure you could add labels into the cell, but you can add a new <clears throat> column type to a table called la uh, to That's a table true. called labels. Yeah. So tags or something. Yeah. So or you could do labels. I'm used to using the word tags because, like, I just come from the Notion world. Even but yeah, you better. That is even better. Um, I've just changed the content type, the column type two labels so now you can click into the column oh or the cell. snap that's cool yeah. okay so you can let's show how to do that so up here at the top i went to the little carrot and you can change the content the column type and the type is a label the label is well what type of label do you want because you've made a custom label type mm -hmm. called a content type you can do that and now it's a selector which I think that's cool if you're going to do like one label to one column. Personally, what I would do, because again, I'm coming from like kind of the, the modern way of just tag everything. I would kind of want like one catch all and just put a ton of labels inside of it just mm -hmm. because like I would want to filter by that. And I don't really care like what it, what the grouping is, but um, yeah, that's a cool little power move is yeah. being able to go there and make it a label. There's one other thing about labels. Um, mm -hmm. When you're creating them, uh, if you came up with your own label group, it's to that page. So if you've come up with a group that you want to use on another page, it's it's not going to be there oh, at this point. Oh, okay. I'm sure that'll be some kind of feature request in terms that of That seems like something for them to fix. For workspaces that I want to use. Yeah, I want it for the whole workspace because yeah, like the but... workspace to me is like a project. Right. Mm. So I would want that to kind of be like the taxonomy of the project. Um, yeah. yeah. Why do I feel like we're talking about site out. columns right now? <laughs> <laughs> what, do yeah. we need some taxonomy that we can use across our whole organization? Right. No, you keep your managed <laughs> metadata out of this. All right. Oh, that's that's totally. But <laughs> I know somebody's thinking while they're watching that, like, can I have you know an organizational library of labels, and I want to publish those to all of my users so that everything's the same. <clears throat> Guys are geeking too hard. Um, <laughs> that like like we talked about friction. That type of stuff adds friction to the experience. Mm, and then what you're going to end up with is back when I was back at Cerner, we had Jira. And Jira, they had added like 90 different custom fields to Jira at the enterprise level. So like every time you wanted to do something, you had to like scroll through a bunch of duplicate things because like, you know, the field was named like two words and then one word and it was duplicated everywhere. So be careful what you ask for when you get like up to scaling at the enterprise level. Um, right oh, now it's I, a page. Yep. <laughs> I do not want that in in here. This is this is for ideation. This is for for getting started. This is for notes. This is for brainstorming. This is not uh, something that I want my organization interjecting in. This is for me get to to get my drafts going to to build up that that material and to have to interject uh, organizational taxonomy into it would be beyond a buzzkill. Yeah, yeah, let's not let's not kill the fun <laughs> quite yet. You know, what's nice about this is it's clean. Um so other components that we have uh on that that topic, we talked about labels. I think labels is one of my favorite uh new features 
but there's also progress tracker, which is another one of those type of pre-made tables for you, which is really cool because um, it gives you the structure. You've got different types. Like this is a checklist. This is a date field. You know, this is a tag right here. So this is a way that you could take this component. You don't even have to do it in a workspace, but you could take that component, put it into your team's group chat in teams. Right. So I'm going to, I'm actually going to go into teams and just do this. So say that you've got a group of three people, me, Daryl, and, uh, and Andy, we're all, you know, engineers working on an engineering team. And you would be able to, I guess it's not available in teams quite yet, but my hope is the dream is turn this into your daily standup. So what I would mm -hmm. want to do is insert a loop component that is a progress tracker where everybody would put the three things, right, that you that are part of Scrum. What did you do yesterday? What are you going to do today? And do you have any blockers? So the scrum master can go work on that. Like imagine like you could get away from having stand up calls every day. If everybody just did that inside of the chat. And also there's like a ton of third party apps and teams that do that for you. But like, what if you had that just as native capability where you could say, Hey, power automate every day at 8 AM slap this loop component in there and let everybody do the stand up without having to like stand around and talk about it. So that's, that's kind of where I could see that going, you know? Yeah. Cause you got the guy in New Zealand has to get on a stand up with people in Chicago, you know, <laughs> it's like, it's, it's a little bit hard when you span I mean, the entire globe. So, yeah, well, we kind of used that concept um, mm -hmm. in workspaces that we ran for projects that the, the idea was we would try and, um, update our status on a deliverable using a page for a deliverable we'd update our status mm -hmm. in terms of what we're working on and maybe the tasks related to that so it yeah. it all kind of became attached to the thing and you just go there and work on the thing and see what what the progress was so it, it was it was quite useful mm -hmm. yeah yeah marilyn's saying uh, i could see that like spinning out of control if you had like a huge team you know, yeah. I, I think, you know, it depends, right? Like if you have a team of 30 people, you probably weren't doing a 15 minute stand up anyway, where all 30 people talked. Uh -huh. I almost see that kind of as being like more streamlined because then everybody could be typing. And what I heard, uh, I think I heard this on a podcast maybe is that, uh, you can have what up to 50 people editing a component at a time. That's the limit is what I had heard. Um. Well, it's a limit on how many people you can invite into a workspace from a Microsoft account. That's the first place I saw that limit. But okay, um, you know, traditional limits of how many co-authoring people can you have inside a Word document that was that was two hundred people at one point. So yeah, I'm, I'm not sure about about loop components and how many people you can, or rather, loop yeah, pages. Yeah, I thought I had many. heard something about that, like the. Mm. It was like 50 or something. Um, if anybody from Microsoft is watching and wants to clarify that, let us know if you happen to know what the limit is. Uh, I just on that. looked it up. The number of members in a loop workspace is 50 members. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. I was I was listening, a read wise reader. I was having it read to me out loud while I was driving on CarPlay, and I couldn't remember where that was. So. Thanks for clarifying. Um, Bridget asked from from one of the paired channels, um, can Loop be used with uh, GCC subscriptions? Do we know yet if it's available mm. in GCC? Um, components, um, uh, I think, are there you know, in terms of your like Loop chat and um, Teams chat, rather. Um, I don't think it is. And it kind of goes back to why we had to configure and turn loop on, that it was off by default for tenants. That, uh, you know, that can be a discussion um, somewhere along here, but maybe now. Mm -hmm. um, it isn't fully compliant. It doesn't um, help you to run a, an e discovery and find that content and rehydrate it and all the sorts of, you know, like chain of custody things in terms of documents. So mm -hmm. I would say, I think that it's not yet available in GCC until that um, is sold. Yeah. It looks Same like loop components. Yeah, it looks like loop components are not available in Teams chat, which is like step one. Um, but that is coming according to the roadmap in May of 2023. So hopefully that'll help you out, Bridget. 
I think that's probably when they're they're aiming to have the um, compliancy tools ready as well. Yeah, I could see that. Well, so purview compliance. Oh, that says feedback loop. That's not Microsoft loop. That's just an unfortunate feedback uh, loop. same word. <laughs> Side joke there. Um, yeah. you know, people say, how do I give feedback on loop? And th there is a sort of question mark in the bottom right-hand corner where you can click on a, a workspace and give that feedback. But we do know there's a feedback portal, feedbackportal.microsoft.com for all the different products you know, across mm -hmm. Microsoft 365. Yeah. But early on, I said, "Look, we should we should actually create a namespace on that called the feedback loop for loop feedback." Sure. Uh, <laughs> dad jokes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like that Microsoft's kind of leaning into the the feed the loop thing. I've seen them making jokes about like keeping you in the loop and stuff like that. So haven't heard that one before. They they know what they're doing. <laughs> but yeah, that feedback give feedback is right here at the bottom. So I was kind of showing that as Daryl was uh, explaining it. That's where you would give feedback. All this helpful feedback that we're saying out loud, we should just go type all of it out. Mm. Um, so that's progress tracker. The other one I think Andy was, or Daryl, yeah, was getting ready to do is the emoji picker. So that's we've so got cool. emojis, yeah, just like Microsoft Teams. Um, you'll notice that you do have the recent area, which is really nice. Cause like I added the little music notes on the agenda. So it knows that I used that recently. Um, my favorite one I've been using lately is, uh, oh, they don't quite have it, all of the teams ones, but there's a robot with sunglasses. I've been using that every time somebody talks about like AI, but there's a generic robot that you can use. So um, Daryl's talking here about mentioning files. So mm. this is something that I found yesterday you, you've got like the little helpful pop-up that comes up and you can add insert uh, components, but you can also find things using the at mention. And it's not just people. You can see people up here, but it's also files. This is how you would at mention a file to insert that into your, uh, your space. And because I'm brand new, I don't have like all of my OneDrive files, you know, that it wants to suggest for me. But I imagine Daryl has a lot more that he would be able to paste in there. Yeah, um, to it's, reference something it's else. It's not quite working as I'd like. Uh, when you're <clears> at mention <throat> to start with, you'll get three of your most recent files. And if you've been working mm -hmm. in Loop a lot, you're going to see loops, of course. Um, mm, yeah. you, you click a, the button for files, and I would expect to see a list there. But what would happen is if you at mention, like a, a, you know the yeah. name of a um, file. Um, and start mm -hmm. to type it. And I'm just trying to find one. <laughs> uh, here we go, Project Radio. Um, so that'll appear there, and it, it uses that little kind of chiclet of here's the document, here's where you'll find it, mm -hmm. and it shows the pathway through. And this is also important to mention that because you add mm. something to a page doesn't mean that you're giving access to it. So Daryl added that on his screen over there. I'm going to show his screen on, on the stage. He yep. added that that Word document, and he sees it rendered. But what I see, I don't have access to this file. Mm. So it, it respects that underlying access to yeah. the files. So that's good to know. <laughs> what it doesn't do here, John, um, with, with that particular scenario, is it doesn't, mm -hmm. as I'm adding that to the page, it doesn't prompt me to say, hey, you might want to share that. And partly that's because this file... Yeah is in Laura's um, OneDrive. Now, she's a demo user I have. Um, mm -hmm. But where it might have been a file I was um, owning or maybe a loop component or a workspace or a something, when I add that in, it's going to say, D you haven't shared this yet or you haven't shared this workspace or page with these people yet. Do you want to do that? Um, mm -hmm. Let's see if I can do that. That would um, be nice, yeah, if we kind of had that that helpful outlook type of uh hint you know to yeah let you so know. um have a look at this i've just i've just mentioned elizabeth swan she's another demo user that i have um back uh -huh. when i was into pirates of the caribbean um so <laughs> it's an it's an empty kind of uh, uh sign there to say she hasn't have access to it but click on it give it mm -hmm. notify her share i can notify her and yeah exactly and so now she's an actual person she doesn't have mm -hmm. that dotted line around her. Um, 
but it only Another... shares this page, not the workspace. So that's that's actually oh, good okay. too. That's helpful to know. Yeah. Okay. Um, another thing I noticed here is like, so with mentioning the file, I couldn't get to it. So what I did, which we haven't mentioned yet, is next to each of these components, there's a little chat bubble. So you can do a quick emoji, like reaction to it. And um, you can also add a comment. So I added a comment saying, I can't get to this. Daryl could give me access and then he could add a reply. And can you at mention somebody inside? Yeah, the... I'm actually at mentioning Laura in that. And yeah, so I'm I could that... say, can you get to this? And I could at mention Andy and we've got a little chat going on inside of this loop component, you know, about like, Hey, I can get to the file. So that's pretty handy. I could do like a questioning reaction. Mm. I'll jump in as Laura and give you access. So you can yeah. actually see. So it. that's something that I could see you guys like running into out there in the wild is like, you know, Hey, Rather than having, again, we're talking about like not changing context. Rather than having to go out to Teams or go out to Outlook and try to chase down somebody, I could just leave a comment on the actual workspace, you know? And it's that thing of like, it's, I'm not, I'm not getting out of my flow, my flow state, right? Um, you should have access now if you refresh. Okay. So Phil says uh, you can at mention people outside the workspace. Yeah, so that's that, what we're doing. That was what we did with Elizabeth. Yeah. And it's like, well, they don't have access. So it's smart enough to know that, but it didn't go one step deeper into the file access. But if I refresh the page now at the bottom, there it is. It loaded up for me. So that's cool. Um, honestly, so to draw a comparison to Notion, I bet you with like Notion access, it would have done it like right away. I wouldn't have to refresh. I know I notice mm -hmm. whenever I share things in Notion with Andy, it's like unbelievably responsive whenever like he pastes in in an embed. I don't ever have to like refresh the page or something. But um, but hey, I've got it now. And now I could like take that whole thing away. I guess I could probably delete the whole thread. Yep, that deletes the whole thread because I did the top level. So that's adding files that's mentioning files mentioning people the emoji picker progress tracker labeling tagging voting tables um what else have we not talked about these are all kind of like they've been around there's also date that you can do so you could do that i wonder divider <laughs> if you do that it does at today so it does that yes i did do dividers for like where can you use loop hmm I separated them by dividers. I think that's pretty helpful to kind of structure your page a little bit. You got the images so yeah, you can as add well. dividers and dates. Um, and it looks like you can't do like a a referential date, right? So you can't do like slash date and do like tomorrow, you know, and have it be smart or have it be like um, in here with like a task list, have it be like a recurring every Friday or mm. something like that. So it doesn't look like you can have date variables. It's more like an actual date. Mm. A little bit more static, I guess. Um, yeah, in terms of... So here was, how do you mention it. documents? Let's go back to that real quick. So to show that, let me... Um, let me get this all off the of screen here real quick. So... To mention a document, you would do the at sign and then the files show up right here. So it was like Project Radia, I think is what it was. Yeah. And it, it came up. It's, it's not, not a good for some reason. It's not a good demo because like I'm brand new. But if Daryl scrolled down, I just put your screen on there. Yeah. If you scroll down and start typing it, you'll see it come up under suggested. So there's his file and he clicks it. It inserts the file. The other thing you could do is you could just copy and paste a link to the file in, and then it will render it as an embed. And I'll show you guys that um, when we get down here to uh, sharing. There's a few things about those links too, John, that when you right click on them, you've got options about where you want to open it, whether you want oh, to share Oh, that's it. nice to see. Whether it's a link preview, which is what we're seeing now, or just yeah. the URL, so I can change the URL, which to... is kind of like just a text. 
Yeah. That's nice to have some, some functionality there. Mm. This is a good question is where can I read about the security model behind loop? Um, <laughs> Is Top there, <laughs> yeah, is there some good uh, docs out yet for nope. for Loop? <laughs> Not yet. Um, the, the, okay. the best one, I guess, came out with um, that explanation around how SharePoint was behind it and some of the things that have changed. But there's definitely been a top comment from IT pros about tell me about permissioning, tell me about the security model and where, where is this stuff stored? Uh, we need mm -hmm. to get into that at some point too. Yeah, there's not really a Loop product area, unfortunately. So I've been I've been searching here on learn.microsoft. So there's not a standalone product section for Loop yet. It's really like inside of Teams, how does it work in Teams? Inside of SharePoint, how's it in SharePoint? Mm. So they kind of need to bring that together into a Loop area, in my opinion. So, um, cool. Yeah, why don't we tackle that? You want to mm. talk about like storage stuff? Kind of move yeah, on from components. Um... What's the best way to, to talk about this? Um, yeah, I've got a little bit of just like a very high level is that for the components, those mm. are stored in your OneDrive. So mm -hmm. the person who's making the component, it's going to make what's called a dot fluid file. They're changing to dot loop files, aren't they? That's that's the plan. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> think the plan is it'll change to dot ago. loop. Yep. Um, and it's stored in your OneDrive. Now, one thing I want to show you that's like really helpful is on office.com, your, your office homepage. This is really cool. If you're looking for loop components that have been shared with you or that you've made, you can do a filter right here at the top of quick access and your type that you're doing can be a loop component. So now I've got a custom feed of all my loop components on office.com. So that's really cool. Like no matter where it was shared, but it's going to be in your OneDrive in, uh, is it a folder? Sorry, I should know this. Yeah, the, the, it actually depends on where you're creating the component from. Um, okay. If you're in Teams, it goes into your Teams chat files. If you're in Outlook, it goes into a folder called Attachments. If you're in, mm. in Word Online, it goes into uh, Loop Word files. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if there's one there for, no, we haven't done it yet for, for Whiteboard, but I expect that there'll be again, a folder for that. Um, yeah. Bit confusing. But I, I wanted to also talk about that too because one of the key things people were hoping for with um, with the Loop app release was, okay, I've got all these loops now out there in the wild um, all stored in OneDrive in my OneDrive. How do I mm -hmm. bring that into the Loop app and, and see that? Um, maybe like it might be best to have a look at um, more of my activity, John, if you don't yeah, mind. Yeah, there you go, man. Um, yep, I switched to you. So it was something that I, I was asking the product group about this. So how do we bring these sorts of things in and, and make them part of workspaces? Over in um, my recent menu um, is going to mm -hmm. show all the different um, loop files that I've been working on. And you can see everything that I've been working on today in this workspace called in the Loopiverse. Uh, mm -hmm. But if I go a bit further down, there's a couple of things that I've been working on for loops within an email. Um, somewhere mm -hmm. down here is another workspace and somewhere here is a chat. And so some of these loops are, are still in the OneDrive space. But what I can do is I can visit those um, and open them up. Or um, if I just go into probably this one. Yep. So I'm opening it up. I'm, I'm now it's opening in the loop app instead of in that office.com experience we had beforehand. And now mm -hmm. I've got that option to add it to a <coughs> workspace, I believe. Um, oh, no. copy to loop workspace? Yeah, well, there is that. I can copy the loop component. Um, I've seen it uh, pop up in some places where I you can know, go, I saw it over, over there. Yeah, like, let me show my screen real quick. Sure. I saw it over here on the sidebar, the page. Mm -hmm. I could hit add to workspace, and then I could select another workspace. Yeah. So you're going to see that when, when you're creating a page in a workspace. Yeah, but, and now but, it's in and, both, right? Yeah. Uh, so It didn't move it, it copied it. Okay. This this um, loop that I'd created as a component in a Teams chat um, back in July, mm -hmm. uh, I believe was also going to get that same share button, grab that component, or, or share it to a workspace. Now, it does mm -hmm. mean that those files that are, 
in my OneDrive or stay in my OneDrive. But one on the wish list is, um, hey, the the cycle of this file that I'm working on, I now want to bring it into a workspace and, and keep it there, somewhere where it's you know stored with with um, with all the other things that I'm working together with on my team. Uh, so mm -hmm. I want to be able to move that that loop file and. That that's something that's I guess in development. Um, it's on the wish list. Okay. Interesting. We haven't looked at the ideas space. That's another thing. Yeah. What about ideas? Whenever you create a new idea, where's that one stored? These are again still uh, in. Oh, okay. I know I'm a bit all over the place here because we're we're looping all, all, all kinds of places. Um, <laughs> yeah, to, to back it up, um, in in private preview, it appeared that loop workspaces were created in a SharePoint site collection. In fact, I could go through to um, SharePoint, for example, and I could see um, you know names of sites up here that were named after the workspaces that I'd created. Uh, mm -hmm. Now it's almost like they've transitioned to. Well, actually, they're going to be out in a in a um, a OneDrive styled space. It will still be powered by SharePoint, um, but I will not be able to visit that site like I could in Private Preview. I can't go in and see the file and folder structure. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's not something I can just go ahead and visit. So they're still kind of talking about it as if it is OneDrive, but powered by SharePoint. Um, so when you create a workspace and you invite you know fifty people to it. It's still stored in your OneDrive space, but now mm -hmm. it is um, contained and, and used by a number of different people. So back like to my ideas. Hidden. So like I'm over here on yeah. on my OneDrive that's like empty. And I think this yes. is what Phil was talking about. So I made a loop file in a chat. So it's in mm -hmm. Microsoft Teams chats, but I added an idea. It's not in my OneDrive but I've got this quick access area right here with all these like lists. And if I click on those, it says the list is not valid, but that's called ideas. Mm. And then if I go here, that's my getting started. And there's our into the loop of verse, but I, yeah. it's nothing went, you know, I can't do anything with that, but it like created what appears to be a site collection um, or, or a, uh, a document library of sorts. Yeah, and well, I just it, can't. It is, I can't browse it like a normal SharePoint um, it, thing. It is a site collection. I mean, in fact, you know, when we have our own OneDrives, those are site collections too. It's a personal space. It's just mm -hmm. it's not what we would consider traditional SharePoint. It's, I don't think it will ever be a site that we will be able to crack into and use for other purposes. That would just be super confusing. But you know, some yeah. feedback the community are giving definitely is, I don't actually want to see CSP blah de blah de blah. -de -blah popping yeah. up and crowding out all the other stuff that I use genuinely. So they are working on um, hiding that within certain yeah. experiences as well. Yeah. Phil says like Microsoft's admitted that it's a bug and they're going to clean it up. Mm -hmm. Also, he says here, like, I kind of think it's just like some kind of storage container. I'm kind of like with Phil on that. It feels like, it feels like this is the SharePoint equivalent of like blob storage where yeah. it's like, it, yeah, it's just out there. Don't, don't lose sleep over what's going on, you yep. know, unless you're in compliance, you know, then yeah, you need to know things. But, you know, then again, when it's in purview, when it's in like all of these compliance tools, that's how mm. you're going to be interfacing with it anyway. You're not going to be going into that blob storage and navigating it manually. You know, you're going to be using your compliance and security tools. Mm -hmm. So just something to think about. Um, well, it's all real quick. Your sequel. <clears throat> behind the scenes hey um so uh, as we're going through all of this um i'm live tweeting and sharing all the links and everything and yeah. I, I got something that i, I want to bring up um so uh shane has uh, has chimed in um he's the leading product management for microsoft loop and mm -hmm. so in the um uh in the Twitter world, uh, I was, uh, where can I read about the security model behind loop part of the thread TBD? And the short mm -hmm. answer is, um, it's built on top of graph, Microsoft identity and SharePoint. And they're going to be adding some of the uh, security and compliance features here in the, uh, 
uh, the near future. So that's the, the kind of answer to some of the security and compliance that we cool. have for now. But I just wanted to bring that in because oh, cool. hey, Microsoft, glad you guys are, uh, ch- are uh, tuning in today. Are seeing and, that, yeah. <laughs> and playing along with us. That's awesome. Cool. Thanks, cool. thanks for that reply, Shane, if you ever see this. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, yeah, they should so, see it, man. It's a, it's a, it's a massive feedback session, and, and they need to. We need to yeah, chapterize this video we're, so it's easier. We're doing it to live. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that covers a little bit of storage. We've talked a little <clears throat> bit about the confusion that I, that I had, and I've seen on Twitter about like, well, is it a central location? Is it creating a full blown SharePoint? You know, um, I got a reply too from somebody earlier about like, you know, what about a group construct? You know. Like mm. I, my brain is programmed to be, you know, um, to be in the mindset of like, when you do this, it creates a group, you uh, know, um, like I think Matt Wade's, uh, you know, um, not the periodic table, but the, uh, the group, like how yeah. groups work infographic, imagine him trying to add loop workspaces to that. <laughs> it's like, you know, if it, it, it kind of breaks me a little bit to say like, mm. It's not the way everything has been up until now, yeah. You know, um, so I, I struggle with that a little bit personally, um, and I'm sure a lot of but traditional you, people do. Would you want to see um, like a collection of fifty different workspace Microsoft three six five groups that also provision a planner, also provision a? One I know drive, that's the thing also is provision like provision a SharePoint yeah. site. No, if I go would, to Planner, I see all of my teams that are all dead and orphaned. Yeah. Like I see all of those with no planner boards, you know? So mm. it's like, I don't think I want to see this get cluttered right off of the bat, no. but it just kind of like, as far as membership, it just like my brain wants to think in terms of like, that's creating an Azure AD security group. Mm. It has a mailbox for the workspace, but like, that's not what it's doing here. You know, so that that takes a little bit of adaptation, I think, for us who are kind of, I guess, old school M365, if that could be a term now. You know, it's (laughs) like we're in like next gen 365 right now. (laughs) The Loopiverse. The Loopiverse. So, but yeah, I I don't know where I was going with that. I'm just like, I'm struggling with it. So I'm sure other people are too. (laughs) I think it's it's, um, definitely going to be... um, important as it's in preview now there's a number of things that mean loop app is not ready for some organizations um and this is yeah. one of those things that needs to be uh ironed out is how does this yeah. work how are they controlled uh where are the admin controls if i need to jump in and and um you know do this on behalf of someone uh, mm-hmm. what, what is that all how does that all work and this is the kind of the gaps that need to be filled to make it yeah truly enterprise ready if i can say that yeah yeah fairy geek mother agrees please Mm -hmm. no more groups (laughs) i mean my organization like i you you would not be able to guess how many how many groups there are in an organization the size i work for so phil says uh i feel old enough as it is don't make me feel older so classic phil so it yeah admittedly uh, as soon as I got access to this through Daryl's tenant and um, we were granted access to the workspace, the first thing that I actually did was I actually started drilling down into OneDrive to see what I could find. And mm-hmm. specifically, um, I did the trick where you go into the classic mode of OneDrive and you can get to kind of the backstage mm-hmm. area, uh, which allows you to go into the OneDrive mm-hmm. site content. And for those of you who do anything with Microsoft webinars, you know that there's a whole bunch of like Classic lists that get created back here. Document so view. So immediately <laughs> I went here to see what I could find if there was, you know, the a workspace file or something like that that was kind of buried on there. And there's not. Um, I wasn't able to. There's just a couple of the default um, OneDrive libraries that are mm. actually stored uh, back there. So um, just kind of trying to figure out. Um, what was going on behind the scenes in, in OneDrive? So that's the first place I, I was I visiting. I think our clue is that blog post talking about the new SharePoint storage platform, which I'm sure we're going to hear about at, at M365 yeah. conference that, John, you said earlier, blob storage. Well, I think there's going to be this new type of SharePoint blob that offers mm. that kind of 
that kind of experience and how storage will be used. Powered by yeah. SharePoint does all the SharePoint things, but we're not going to be able to go and use it as a as an actual mm -hmm. team site. Yeah, you think that's going to be what what Jeff and Dan and all them have been hinting at? Part of it is yeah, like I they talked so. about a new look at at SharePoint, so it might be reframing it for all of us. We'll see. So stay tuned for May announcements potentially. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So yeah. Some people are talking a little bit about like enterprise readiness. She's like, and imagine using this in school where people are like mutilating each other's content. Yeah. <laughs> people messing with each other. Yeah. Uh, there was a question like up earlier that was like, you know, I wish there was a way to share a f uh, pages like read only. You know, oh, so no, that you, you can could have do like a, a wiki. You can. You can? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. if I'm going in here and I share a page link, I guess it's just regular like OneDrive style. Go so I can say in here, permission. cannot can view, mm -hmm. and then I can share that with the whole organization, and then I could copy that. I could go post yep. that on Yammer. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah. So you could kind of make like a a wiki of sorts. Yeah. People it means could, that like, between us. It up. We're contributing to yeah. the content, but we could make that loop live and available to across the org. Yeah. V only. The next question, is it ex possible to ex export it? I haven't seen any export options. <laughs> nah. um, or print it. <laughs> yeah. That would, like uh, I know Andy's thinking in his mind, like, what about Markdown? <laughs> Can I export it as Markdown? You know? Just, so it's Just portable. don't go that next step and say, and regex. No, no, yeah. just mark down to take it to a blog. Okay. Yeah, or to Obsidian. <laughs> <laughs> well, where's the export to Obsidian button? Yeah, so yeah. disappointed. <laughs> Lift and shift to Notion. <laughs> um. Okay, so we talked about the structure, the storage stuff, uh, version history. We've talked about that. We talked about the navigating. Um, you know what the components. <laughs> Or the areas of the application are. So getting there's into sharing. A couple things I want to. Can we get back, back to navigation? navigation for, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah there's ahead. there's a couple things I want to go. Um, let me let me drive for a minute. Yeah, man. Bring myself back up on the screen. Yeah, sorry. I'll turn mine off. I'm trying to get us to All not right. be like multi-column. <laughs> yeah. So um, just going through a couple of things that um that I noticed. So first things first, creating a page. It's so like go in, you know, create a page and I want to create a new page. So it's asking for like, you know, a name right away. So like, um, uh, we'll call this directions. So first thing, like, as I'm doing that, you see down here, um, uh, on the sidebar, it's naming the page and it's got like a page placeholder that's associated mm. with it. So like right away, I didn't pay attention to the things right above it. I'm very much focused on the thing that I'm in line with. So I'm like, well, how do I add like an emoji to it? Cause you know, Daryl had some really nice emojis kind of going. So I was like, well, yeah. let me just go in. I'll do my keyboard shortcuts. Like, like normal, bring up the emoji picker, grab, you know, a map or a compass or whatever. And I'll drop that in kind of like we do in Microsoft Teams when you create yeah. like a new channel put that emoji off to the side. So I did that and then I noticed, oh, wait, you know, it doesn't work like that. It actually wants you, there's an actual icon placeholder for it. So you can go in um, and uh, rename it. And that's one of, so right clicking and renaming it, that's one of the places that you can add the icon. The other is above it um, where you can also do like, I guess, a banner image to go along with it. Mm -hmm. but you can select from like an icon and I think the, the terminology is don't get uh, don't go crazy, uh, you know, searching for for the icons. Mm -hmm. But I just wanted to point that out. Now we've got a custom icon that's at the top, along with like the cover area. Yeah. And then even in line, you can still drop some emojis, but it'll kind of clutter up the sidebar a little bit. Yeah, you're kind of duplicating. You, if you do that. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought that was kind of um kind of interesting um when creating a page and like trying to look at some of the navigation, and then just mm -hmm. going back a couple other um things. Um, uh, that I noticed. Um, I like, it's very subtle, but you can kind of see it in this right here. Um, that's a screenshot of actually the sidebar and like wherever you are, it's kind of highlighted in the white pill, but it's also giving you that, that purple vertical, uh, off to the side. Mm -hmm. uh, we see the same things in, uh, in Microsoft teams in a number of places. It's a little so bit really higher like contrast that, for of, accessibility. Yeah. 
Yeah. So like when a whole bunch of people get in here and you're kind of moving here and there and doing things like just figuring out like, where am I? And just being able to, you know, have that uh, kind of return to home sort of thing off to the, to the side to like help me figure out where I am. Uh, and then going back a um, couple other things, just briefly to point out the workspace selector. So like, these are all the workspaces that I have open. This is very reminiscent of uh, OneNote having multiple notebooks essentially open at the same time. Mm-hmm. Here I can have, you know, a couple of different workspaces to switch back and forth between, but if I need to, I can browse all of my workspaces. And this is kind of the, the look and feel they're doing across like uh, most of the Microsoft apps and services. Kind of like list looks so, and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so I like the flexibility, just being able to bounce back and forth between um, the different workspaces because I might not always work in the same one. Mm-hmm. Um, this is the home landing page. We just saw that. The um, page and list sub page off to the side. I wanted to point out um, list format now, but we can switch back and forth into the tree view, which is um, mm-hmm. or the tree view and the activity view. Yeah, the there was a question about the that recent. from A Train. Yeah. There was like, where's the activity view? If you're looking at Andy's yep. cursor right there, it's in the upper right corner of the menu bar on the side, the sidebar. Yeah, so right up cool. here. Yep. So you can switch back and forth. And that's really cool because it's going to, if you do activity, it's going to bring, you know, last open, last edited right up to the top. So when these workspaces start to get bigger, now I don't have to sift through as much to find out where some of those changes are actually happening. I thought that was just a really, really cool little feature. And I didn't even know it until Daryl pointed it out when we were doing kind of a debrief last night. So I thought that was cool. Mm-hmm. Um, just a couple other things. Uh, this one for me is kind of subtle, but also like really handy. So like, as I get into this, like, you know, we've got some over here where we're in the workspace, we've got a page and then we got some like sub pages underneath it and, or, or, or underneath it. And it's like, mm-hmm. where are you? I thought it was really cool. They put in a breadcrumb at the yeah, top. Like that's I, very helpful. I, admittedly, I'm a SharePoint, you know, person. That's where I came from. And the breadcrumb was super helpful way back in the day. And then it mm-hmm. like went away and that, you know, that was painful, but to know where I'm, where I'm coming from or, you know, what's a level up. I, I really like that. And then, This one was subtle. Um, I noticed this when I was doing all the screenshotting. So if you pay close attention, you'll know like around my screenshots, there's a red dashed outline. Mm -hmm. And what that's telling me is that it's uh, it's accessibility. So I put in a picture um, and it's telling, it's it's, um, giving you the opportunity to add alt text for those people that are visually impaired and might be working with this. So I thought it was a cool little thing. Um, You can... um, double click on it and then you can bring up the uh, the alt text and you can actually fill in you know what that is so we'll just say screenshot of the loop bread crumb now here's the neat thing if you add something in there and it's strictly decorative you can mark it as decoration um, and it's not going to have like um like you know say it's a stylistic border for instance um, and so you can mark things that are just decorative that don't have any impact of the user um, that's reading your page needs to know about. And then it'll bring that um, that dashed outline away. Now, this was a screenshot <laughs> of that, and it did the same thing to the screenshot. So um, it's still going to have the red dash, but we did fix, uh, fix that. And so that's just how you can go in and enter some of the alt text. And you can even right click on that and add your alt text or mark it as decorative. And I just thought those were just some subtle little things in the uh, user interface that were mm-hmm. that were pretty cool. Yeah, and applause for Microsoft with their continued focus <laughs> toward accessibility and calling out. I mean, there's a lot of things that aren't there day one, but alt text is. And if, for, if somebody is, you know, it, like has vision impairments and vision difficulties, that you would want that day one, you know, so it's like as much as we complain about things that aren't there on day one, at least people who are low vision can use this tool. And I've seen that it works with screen readers as well. You know, I mean that like kudos to them for, for caring about that stuff. Cause usually accessibility is bolted on later and it's just really good to see, you know, Microsoft's committed to like putting that in at the start. So I'm glad you pointed that out, Andy. That's really good. Yeah, I'm really glad they put that in there. My only mm-hmm. suggestion would be like if we could find some way to get some um, generative AI on top of some of that to help us to build oh, yeah. uh, some of mm-hmm. those uh, that alt text into it. I think That'd that cool. would would really be uh, a huge boost in the in that generation or, or yeah. toward generating that for those users that need it. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so that's navigation. Um, let's see here. Let's let's go back to our agenda and check on where we are. I got it. Oh, okay, yeah, you got sharing. it. Sharing. Let me turn it off. Yep. Okay, so. Yeah. Yep. So the next thing is sharing workspaces, components, and pages. We've got multi levels of sharing now mm. with <laughs> Luke. So you want to walk us through that, Andy? Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to do my best, but I'm going to lean on Daryl for a lot of this because, uh, as we were going through it, um, hands on, and then even like, um, we had a call yesterday where we talked about some of this and then John and I continued on for a little while. Like it, it was, it felt like inception inside of inception inside of inception. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I don't have my token. So like, you know, I can't, I can't figure <laughs> out like where I am in the dream, but, um, <laughs> all right. So sharing a workspace uh screenshotted it just so you can see it but you know in the upper corner that's where the workspace uh share screen uh popped up um and then page links and then the loop components so share the Mm -hmm. workspace so invite me uh invite members inside of here and daryl i'm not sure who else in available in your tenant Uh, but let's see if um hmm i think we just added a couple more so um try matt m-a-t-t yeah, I'd seen Matt Stafford. earlier. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So invite them in. Now that's going to give them access to the whole workspace, right? Correct. Um, all the pages, all the components, and everything inside of there. And then mm-hmm. we can go up to but the top. But not the documents that are referenced with. inside. Mm-hmm. So that's important to point yeah. out is like if there's a document that's referenced inside there or attached in some way, that doesn't, but all the loop stuff does like components and pages. Yeah. So sorry to interrupt, Andy. <laughs> no, no worries. <laughs> That's really good to point out because I was going to completely blast past that. No, you're good. About it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So heading back to that, then there's the share page link. So we're on the sharing page. So I'm assuming it's going to just pull for this page without, I could also right click and get to the same thing in the left navigation. Mm-hmm. So this is the sharing menu that we're familiar with mm-hmm. and we're used to in the, team sharepoint onedrive office and uh world um so moving in through here let me just knock everything off the desk um <laughs> we can work with the the share settings now i'm going to assume that when we're sharing here that it's going to use the same organizational defaults that we set in the admin Correct. center for uh the level of sharing um, based off of the link so in this case we've just dis- you've disabled the anyone link and it mm-hmm. defaults to people in the org. Mm. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And it's only so we make our share that page. Just the one. Yep. And then like we, we demoed earlier, we can go back and forth between edit and then we can make a view only if we need. Yeah. Now, my question for this would be, I've just generated a shared link for this particular page. How do I manage that shared link in the future? (laughs) Mm. Yeah, kind of like the shared uh, from me section in OneDrive. Yeah. Is it available there? Uh, Let's go through. We don't have anything in that sharing settings. Shared by you. Shared with you. Where we'd normally see that is, is actually in that sharing dialogue when we go through those steps. Getting back to blob storage, here's my access. screen. I went to OneDrive and went to shared and then mm-hmm. shared with you. And there's the things that Daryl shared with me, which is in constant storage, doc, library, loop, app data, this like generic container. That's where that the agenda is right here, but it's in this like generic location. So there's that. So I'm wondering, Daryl, if it shows shared by you, do you see a whole bunch of loop stuff that you, then you could manage sharing from there? Or are you going to show from like the loop app, you can manage it. Mm, so you're shared, in OneDrive, shared. shared by me. So we do not see it in the shared by you section. Kind of, this is a side comment. I, I want <laughs> OneDrive to do a bit more like modified dates and times. But Filtering and stuff? Yeah, yeah that'd be nice. Um, none of this is actually related Those to what I've done like recently. Those would be like chat so files, kind of yeah. <laughs> cool. Hmm. 
yeah, I wouldn't know how to get to that actually, but yeah, because we can't get to where the file is in workspaces, we can in OneDrive because we can go and find our, our fluid files there. But in yeah. workspaces, we can't go to a file and say manage access, kill that link, um, stop sharing that. Mm -hmm. Good observation, Andy. Yeah, that is good. That, that seems like a little bit of a gap. Mm. Wish list item. <laughs> yep. Okay. I'm going to tweet about that. So I got a marker um, brought up for that. Um, I, there was a couple other things in the sharing to, uh, to go through. I'll come back up on the screen. Yeah. Yeah, let me, oops. <laughs> we both flipped we at go. the same time. <laughs> Which somebody asked right. in, a, in the chat uh, while you're tweeting that. Um, Somebody asked, like, hey, are you able to share multiple desktops and restream? Yes. Uh, so <laughs> we are, each one of the three of us, we're sharing our screen, and then we're able to just swap that out uh, by just dragging and dropping it um, from one to the other. So I'm kind of dragging it into the big space. But, yeah, I love being able to have multiple shared pieces of content at the mm -hmm. same time. Now, you can't share more than one of your local monitors it's one, it's each person is sharing one screen through uh, Chrome or Edge, but I gave Andy some time to to get his tweet out. And I've added that to the Maybe list. Maybe not. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> All right. So uh, continuing on, um, some of these uh, same things like the page link option that was also available if you go in and um, right click inside of there. So there's the share page link that uh, that pops up. Um, over there. Mm. Uh, and then we demoed earlier the share loop component. So we've seen uh, seen that, um, but just put that on the on the page. Um, yeah. So going down here, so this is actually a component uh, that uh, has been added to uh, to the page. So we can access that in um, in the page. Um, but there was also a way to share it and that's in the um <laughs> upper right hand corner so we can see like who has access mm -hmm. i'm gonna hurry up and wait oh you're not even seeing that menu there we no, go there it goes no i see it yes who has who has access you know uh, to it okay so those are all nines means nothing to most of us um but those of us who have seen sharepoint storage you'll have a look at this uh, and hover over you'll see members owners visitors and your own name. So um, let's say that the sharing or security structure is still based on SharePoint, but I think it's you're added to a members SharePoint site members group, owners group, visitors group. Because I don't see any mm -hmm. of your individual names when I hover over that. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. So do you actually see names when you hover over it? Because I'm hovering over it and I'm not getting anything. No, no. I see I see a manager, a writer, manager, writer, a reader, and an owner. It's like it's got a role associated mm. with it. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Four You're roles. seeing that on your screen? Yeah. Do you want to see it? Yeah. So yeah. Owner. Because I'm not seeing that. Reader. Writer. I'm seeing that on mine. Manager. Cool. So that's that's a clue as to to what the security roles are because those are groups. Yeah. And honestly, like again, going mm, back yeah. to private preview, those were the traditional classic SharePoint groups that you would find for a site for managing permissions. Owner, writer, so they reader. have changed now to these four. Cool observation. <laughs> We're seeing All a little right, bit of so how the. Uh... How the sausage is made. <laughs> yep. <laughs> cool. That's that's really neat. All right. So there was the option to share the component, and we can see that it's uh, it's already out there. Um, I want to focus on the shared locations though over here. So like I've shared the component from here, mm -hmm. but they've got the clover, and that actually occurs uh, up at the top uh, for the workspace, but also within a component. Um, so I can bring that up. And then it says the sharing locations for this component. Mm -hmm. Now, this is something that um, I was hoping uh, to get a little bit more information on. So, like, I followed that, but, like, I'm not really sure what it's showing me here. Because 
Um, what I actually mm -hmm. want to know, and this is like one of my wish list items, is when I create a component here and it gets reused elsewhere, like I'd kind of like to have some visibility into that. Uh, I'd like to have a backlinking maybe to that to understand like what document is this being used in? Like we're generating some tasks here. What, what Teams chat is that associated with? What email was sent out um, related to that? Is there another, say I'm developing a product and we, we did some brainstorming here and now we're starting to draft some documentation related to the product, Mark 1, Mark 2, Mark 3. Like how is this thing um, mm. causing kind of a butterfly effect through some of our other other stuff. So I was hoping that the um, share locations for the sharing component would show some of that information. But in this particular instance, it's not, not well, giving me that I've data. I've just tried to generate a bit of activity there, Andy. Um, just try refresh. I've shared that yep. a link to that component in email and in the chat just now. And what mm, I see is right. open uh, the component shared in this space. There right we here. go. There we go, yeah. Mm, yeah. And then <laughs> a real concise URL. Yeah. And right. I'm, but I'm at least also we can now see the... seeing the, the, the team's chat. So, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Thanks through. Go, go. Cool. All right. So that is that is helpful, but I, I would like to I'd like to see like it, I mean what's that we've shared in a couple of places, and this isn't really giving me anything. I'm not really sure what what that first one is actually for there. Um, well, what's this the backlinking same... to just the component itself, just like the, component. the individual component? Yeah, so okay. so back up a little bit. Um, when we when we are inserting a component or creating some. A component from content on the page we're actually ring fencing around just that content i can share just this task list mm -hmm. you've got that border to yeah. visually tell you that yeah whereas at the top of the page for this um, workspace the same clove clovich sharing locations thing um it's it's trying to show i think it's trying to show the source shared locations for sharing the page so that's that first flag i believe is just the the name of the thing you were sharing right. shared locations so that's going to be the page itself yeah where's that component? so a minute ago <laughs> if you were watching this uh later on on youtube that's not the workspace i said it was the wor or workspace so what it's the, for the actual page so that's the sharing locations for the page mm -hmm. and this is actually the shared locations for that particular component correct that's good to know Hold on, lost screenshot. Well, that's intuitive. <laughs> hey, this is going to make good blog information later. It's it's not very helpful that the page we named is called sharing. So it's like, <laughs> where is sharing shared in the share sheet? <laughs> you know, you share more bit, about we've that? done it to ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> we inadvertently stepped into that one. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, and then we up. Uh, I guess we did. We did take a screenshot of that uh, yesterday. Yeah. All right, so that's what we had in uh, in sharing. Yeah. So A Train has um, a really good comment about that. That I think it's confusing that I can turn a page table into its own component, but it's really a page. Like we talked about that a little bit yesterday, um, Daryl and Andy. That like I think Microsoft maybe like kind of muddied the waters a little bit at the beginning in 2021 where it was you've got components you've got pages you've got workspaces but then mm. whenever the app came out it's like well yeah you've got components on the page but like they're not really components in this page you're going to turn it into a component which then makes it portable to then move it around and put it in you know outlook or or teams or whatever so it feels like there's a little bit of terminology confusion about like, okay, when I do the forward slash, am I always adding a component or is it not a component until I make it a component for sharing? You know, um, at that point, is it a block or is it something else mm. when it's like in a page? And I, I think that probably will need some clarification as we get more mature into like knowing what we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> you know, 
I don't know if you have any thoughts about that, but I also it, found that confusing, like A Train. Yeah, it, 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 yeah, by, by talking about components being a thing you add to a chat or an Outlook, we, we knew as we started to explore it, oh, it's more than that because you yeah. go in here and you've got a page and you can add more stuff to the page. So I challenged them on that and said, well, okay, we've got to come up with the right way we're talking about these things. And initially it was, yeah. oh, it's just blocks on a page. But now that we can also turn those blocks into components themselves, everything on the page is a component. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. This this has shades of, um, and I'm not throwing shade when I say this, but this has shades of Microsoft's naming conventions. You create a team in Microsoft Teams for a team. You have a group that you can add to a Microsoft group to a SharePoint group. Like there's, we have a component inside of a component. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yo dog, we heard you like components. So we put a component in your component yeah. so you can share it as a component in Outlook. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like if you were trying to instruct a class on what is loop and you're talking about the components of loop. You have to switch to say, no, I mean, sorry, the parts of loop. Yeah. The modules mm. of loop. And one of them is called a component. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, I think that's confusing. I think we've made it a little bit worse. It's like, uh, I was watching Ted Lasso, you know, and, and like he, there was some, some word that he was like, is that how you say that word? And he was like, oh, did a word become a sound? <laughs> it was like, <laughs> so, what was it called? Like psychosomatic or something like that. Like, uh, when like a word becomes a sound that's how it is with components like well when is it and when isn't it um yeah i'm, I'm deep in the loop of verse right now <laughs> gotta, gotta pull up a level <laughs> and, and get back on track um well on that bombshell should we uh continue on yeah i think so i think so i'm back to the agenda here um and Let's do, let's look through our list here. So um, we've completed a lot of stuff. We've got where, what is loop, loop and copilot. All these things I think we've talked about. We talked about the personal account Not stuff. Yet. Well, a little bit of I've the personal account. Screen. Like, what, what are you talking about here? Ready to demo. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Talk about that. Yeah. I'll, I'll keep it quick, version. but yeah. it, it certainly was one thing that, um, the loop team wanted to to launch with a free experience as well it wasn't just tied to microsoft 365 but you could oh, okay, yeah. collaborate using microsoft accounts um so you can go to loop.microsoft.com sign in with your microsoft account and it will create a workspace uh, the getting started workspace but uh, i i did sign up for a new microsoft account with with my demo user laura so we created that um i created this onedrive based workspace so mm -hmm. gone in there. And when I invited Laura and I said, share the workspace, um, she has that same experience too. can come in and open up the workspace and we're working together. And that was that first clue that I had that 50, 50 people is the limit to a workspace because mm -hmm. it does mention it as you're inviting someone to it. Um, if I was to go workspace and then add either of your uh, one drive accounts mm -hmm. and I won't ask you to expose that but yeah, um, and it has a counter right there yeah yeah two of yeah. 50 have been added um, some of the things within this experience kind of do and don't make sense we can do all the stuff that we've been showing in the sense of you know adding content like tables headers and components who can create mm -hmm. those pages and sub pages but when you get into things like um, I want to share this component and copy it into a outlook.com email and send it to laura no no not yet um, not in the consumer version yeah i i've got a anyone link yeah. that i can share well if we copied that and dropped it into a, a um private browser it's actually it's interesting it's funny right anyone mm -hmm. share this with anyone and actually in the fine print it also mm -hmm. says you don't have to authenticate well what happens when i um open up a new browser i'm just someone anyone i have to sign in <laughs> yeah you do <laughs> you yeah. need to authenticate look at this namespace too home dot microsoft personal content dot com forward slash content storage slash name of workspace 
Huh. Yeah. So that's the pattern for your Microsoft account workspaces. From Quite a personal a side, yeah. Hmm. But yeah, I wouldn't spend too much more time on that. Just to say that you'll be able to sign in with your Microsoft account at loop.microsoft.com. The mobile apps don't support that yet. Um, okay. So there was some frustration with some people trying it out and going, oh, it's asking me for a work or a school account. I can't use it. Um, mm -hmm. But you can start creating here. The last thing too, there is no um, collaboration between a Microsoft account and an M365 account, a work account. <laughs> So that's not there today. Um, you'll be mm -hmm. collaborating with just Microsoft accounts or just M365 accounts. Okay. Yeah. That's about it. We can move on to the next one. Okay, cool. So we covered that. Sharing, uh, Andy just talked about sharing, so we'll mark that as complete. And then so a, a point for, for discussion is just loop as a PKM versus using loop for collaboration. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of interesting. So Andy and I, we've been geeked out for a while. I think you're also kind of in there, in there with us about like personal knowledge managers and that's getting into like notion and obsidian and one note and the idea of like building a second brain or, you know, all those buzzword type things. Um, I'm curious what you guys think about using loop for like your own ideas or what if you created a workspace for yourself? So you've got structure, sub pages, things like that. Like, do you feel like it's ready for that in its current state? Or do you think it's more leaned into for collaboration and like that friction free collab? Hmm. I'm going to use a workspace for <clears throat> organizing myself personally at work. Um, mm -hmm. But probably probably not to the extent that I'm using notion, for example, like I, I can mm -hmm. create a table to say, these are the videos that I plan to, to work on. Um, or I'm going to plan out my course details or some, some kind of outline for that for my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, well, I'd be waiting for things like a Kanban board or, um, the task management that, um, is kind of there in the product and some people are having a look at it. Um, being able to synchronize your tasks from a task list through to, to planner. Mm -hmm. um, it's that sort of integration, which, which needs to kick in before we can truly use it, I guess, as a um, personal knowledge manager. Yeah. Yeah. Phil's saying he uses OneNote right now. So he's kind of one of those guys that's like eyeing it as a potential switch, you know, <laughs> like what I'm curious, Phil, like if there's things in your, list in your mind of like the that are missing that it will kind of flip you over the edge to using as a pkm so yeah uh agree with a train uh having relational databases would be would be killer um for that so getting into the wish list i think i think it'd be nice to end on a positive note so we'll flip the wish list into lighters um but the wish list that we've come up with so far, just to kind of hit them quick, because I know it's been a long time, is um, there's there's some lacking. I don't know if you have more details about this, Daryl, but I've heard in an enterprise, it's kind of the Loop app is a non-starter right now because of lack of like discovery, things like that. Mm. Do you have a specific list in mind of like what we need, like in purview, e-discovery, things like that? I know some yeah. of it's supported. Yes, some of it is supported, so you can do a search and, and find content, but it doesn't do the deep search that you want. And I think the key thing is um, with any of those e-discoveries and searches is the, the way that information is handled. There's a chain of custody that you've got to follow so that you're not actually ruining the evidence. <laughs> mm, yeah. Um, it locks it off and it's you know it's it's not editable and that's the thing with with um, a loop file is that while it might be gathered together as part of an e-discovery case, mm -hmm. you you can't access it and read it unless you drop it back into a OneDrive, and at that point that's when it becomes editable again because of the nature of the file, and you destroy kind of like well who edited what and where's the version, yeah. so that's that's really the key, the key thing. Um, yeah, Phil's mentioning here about DLP yeah. policies, sensitivity um, labeling. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So Retention all those things policies. that it's going to come because it's built on SharePoint technology. It's just, they've got to figure out the, the rehydration 
chain of custody kind of uh, feature stuff around mm -hmm. around that. Um, yeah. Yeah. We, we talked a little bit about group association. Like we talked about, like, I don't really want it to create a group every time I make a workspace, but mm. you know, it would be nice if I could invite a group of people maybe, or have some type of like common thread, right. Between those two constructs, yeah. um, external collaboration. I'm sure that's something that's coming, you know, um, the, the custom templates. So we'll talk in the delighters about like, there's a few pre-baked templates in there, but me as a Notion user, I like that I can make any type of custom template I want, save it as a template and make it the default template for that mm -hmm. database. So whenever I add a new meeting note, it's got everything like in columns and it's got all my action items and stuff like that. So they've got some good ones to start with, but I'd like to have like fully custom. And then like A-Train, like I think this is the thing most people are screaming about with Notion is have real databases with filtering and sorting and each item on the list is an actual object in a database and you can reference it from other places. I think that'll be a, a killer thing um, to add. Microsoft list? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. If it's like a Microsoft list inside of it, you know, you can have up to, you know, 2,000 or 5,000, whatever the number is now. Um, backlinking and referencing. I know Andy, this is something you're passionate about is like, we kind of have a, a lack of like being able to in other, in other ones, what you do is you do like bracket bracket, and then you reference another page from somewhere else, you know, mm. that would be kind of nice. Wiki, I don't know if you have linking. other, yeah. Other styles of, uh, of things that you're looking for there. Backlinking is in some products. Backlinking is kind of a built-in feature. Um, for example, um, Obsidian has it where um, you, if you have a page and it's referenced in another page, it'll tell you what the backlink for that is. Like for example, if I do a wiki link and I create a new page and I go to that page to edit, if I go to the new page, it gives me a link up in the corner and tells me like where I came from. Backlink mm -hmm. to to that other page. Uh, there's a way to do that in one OneNote, but you got to use a plugin for it. Uh, there's the one more plugin, and it'll insert backlinks. Um, yeah. But I think that's important. Like I like the breadcrumb because it tells me kind of where I am. But if I get down into, I got a page and I'm building something, and then I got another page and I'm building something, like I could see a, 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 an example of this. My team using Loop to manage things like our conversations and collaboration around defining governance for Microsoft 365. Mm -hmm. Like we are the team responsible for the collaborative features in that suite. And I could see us using loop for that. Well, if I start down a path on something and I end up two or three pages deep, like a backlink to the related thing would be helpful. Mm -hmm. The other yeah. thing about the, the links that I think is important is being able to get not only where you came from, but the association of like, okay, I have this thing and it might be connected to three or four other pages. I would like to be able to kind of see that in a, um, in a single list. And again, mm -hmm. some other products have things like that. And then with the one more plugin for OneNote, you can do that and you can see this page is referenced in these three other pages. And then you can follow up from there. There's also in the third party world, like Obsidian, they have this thing called the graph view. And the graph view gives me a 10,000 foot view and it shows me this, you know, this is a page and this is a page and they're connected. They're linked mm -hmm. to one another, but it also shows me, okay, this page is connected to this one and this one, and it gives you concentration bubbles. And so it can say like a mind this map, one yeah. page, exactly, is this one page is, is really important because it connects to these 30 other pages. And then mm -hmm. I've got another concentration bubble here and here. I could see like really when I start using this and like really getting down into it, not knowing what's connected. And that's why I think linking is important to me is it's, it's knowing where, I, where I'm coming from and what all it also connects to so that I can maybe view my information a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can, you know, structure my, my workspace a little bit differently, or maybe I know this product, this widget Mark seven, was not only associated with ideas from widget mark six, but actually it goes back to widget mark three. And, you know, maybe there was some discussion in three that we missed and, you know, it could help us to like maybe get better the next time. So that's what I think about when I think of like the linking stuff, like mm -hmm. reference linking, anchor linking, back linking, 
um, having some kind of a visualization around that. Yeah. And we were looking at the Clover a minute ago. I just want a little bit more. Give me a visualization. <laughs> Give me the graph view. Yeah. So I'll cover these ones real quick because I added. So we already talked about follow me, the ability to like get into presentation mode and have somebody follow you around like during a meeting. Um, for ingest in integrations, what I would like to see. So to bring my notion on screen here, like I, my kind of PKM process is to like get everything into notion so I can take notes on it and things like that. So like this is read wise and everything that I flag as an article, when I listen to a podcast and I double click to like add a flag or something like that, it adds it here. So this is kind of my central brain storage, you know, right. And I could take notes off of it. And so one of these, like if I go to the podcast, there was the work lab podcast recently. And if I open that up, then this is coming from a podcast app to Readwise, Readwise into Notion. And then from here, I'm able to take notes, right? And I've got all these comments on here. So I've got the snip that I did. It takes transcript. Then I can take it. I can highlight. I can take notes and build my knowledge management stuff. And I can add tags to it so I can get to it easier, things like that. And then from another note that I've been taking, I can backlist or I can reference this note. So I've got these notes connected to each other. Um, so I would like more like ingest or like integrations with third parties to get things into loop would be really helpful. Um, somebody mentioned like live databases. If you could have like something pull in from a data set, like for via API. The other thing I have here is toggle lists. So I would like a new type of component that I could collapse like a bulleted list and mm. be able to do that. Cause I use toggle lists all the time to kind of organize my stuff. Like I've got all these toggle lists, you know, for this giant page. So it'd be nice to shrink that down. Um, and then multi-column layouts. What this is, is I mentioned like custom templates. When I go into my note database and I add a new note, I have topics, key takeaways, action items. And then next to it in another column, I have my notes. That way I can be taking notes over here on the side but if somebody likes, if I volunteer for something, it's right here and I don't scroll up and scroll down. It's side by side because I have an ultra wide monitor. So I would like to also see multi-column page layouts to be able to put things next to each other. We were struggling with that yesterday, Andy, where like I couldn't put one picture next to another picture. <laughs> they had to be on top of each other, you know? Yeah. Um, you mentioned the graph view. Maybe we use a table for, for that sort of thing, but it's that's a good it's point. All yeah, scroll at the same time. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, that's a good point. You could have used a table and put a picture in each one, I guess. Um, you talked to, about the graph view, that kind of like mind map, neural network type of thing. Um, the loop components. What about being able to bring things in? I think this was something. Yeah, you added this, Andy, about. Like, what about embedding a PowerPoint slide deck into a loop component and making it so you can click through the slides? You know, having kind of yes, like I'll, real time rendering. I don't know, videos. Yeah, can you play I'll back videos on that. in line? Not yet. No. Okay. Yeah. So I'm yeah, just go thinking, ahead. like, in um in OneNote, they've updated it so like you can put a PowerPoint in your OneNote notebook and you can actually play the PowerPoint right there. It's a, it's kind of like a custom embedded web part that they created works with like OneNote in the web. It's really hel uh, helpful. Like I can just drop in a presentation, create a whole bunch of notes around it, scroll through the presentation and I don't have to have each, you know, all 30 slides and take up my whole notebook. It's just one little player inside mm -hmm. of there. And I think you can do that with um, Word and Excel as well. And I just, I, I really like that in yeah. OneNote. So I like to see that come over into the, into the loop world. Um, and honestly, I like, I'd like to even extend that. Like, I, I mean, we have the ability to create a list inside a loop, but like, can I bring my Microsoft list into it? Like I already have the Microsoft would, list. I'm already using all the that features would do your over database, there. Just, you know? Yeah. Just, yeah. well, and like, I don't even necessarily like want to share it as like a loop component, but like if I'm doing ideation in loop and we've got, you know, co collaboration happening in there, like mm -hmm. here's a list of like things that, you know, this applies to like, let me bring my Microsoft list inside of there and take advantage of the list features. Like even it's just a embedded web part. I want to be yeah. when that's possible. I want to be the first person to create an infinite loop within loop. <sighs> <laughs> so that we're looping loops, and then it just loops and loops and mm -hmm. loops, and then I might get myself in trouble. 
get an infinite loop. <laughs> um, Daryl, you added a uh, channel support for loop app yeah. workspaces. So obviously teams channels. Yeah. That's, um, that's a big one. Everyone's <laughs> screaming out for it. I mean, we've got to have it on the list, but yep. I think, you know, looking at the limitations of how many people can be in a loop and collaborating, you can see why they're, they're cautious with how they're bringing this into teams because a team mm -hmm. can have up to 10,000 people if you're using a full org team. What what would yeah. happen to, to Loop if you <laughs> dropped it in there and people started to collab? That's true. Mm. Um, I added these three from uh, Phil in the chat. So he mentioned guest access, but also anonymous access in meetings. So being able to like throw it in a meeting um, with like external people and stuff would be good. Um, and then he also mentioned Power Automate support. This is something I totally echo with Phil. It would be nice if it, if you could have Power Automate like generate components off of a custom template even would be beautiful because then what I would do, like I mentioned way early on with the whole stand-up uh, Scrum thing, I would like to say, all right, I'm going to make a Scrum you know, progress status uh, table that's customized and then I want... I want it to um, power automate to post it in this channel every day at the same time. So yeah, power automate support would be really rad to add to that. Yeah. Um, Marilyn said, uh, Oh, embed, you know, mm. just that, that would open up like embedding all kinds of things, you know? So you get a real, like uh, a really like, uh, you know, rich type of uh, layout where you're not getting out of to other tabs to see things. So anything else on the, the wish list or should we bring it home? Bring <laughs> it pilot. Bring it home. Co-pilot now. Yeah. Co -pilot yeah. Give now? us co-pilot earlier. That sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and maybe, maybe co-pilot will be the answer to like, why bring the whole Microsoft list into, into loop? Why not just have co-pilot mm -hmm. go and analyze it and find certain data and then bring that into loop? Yep. Yeah, I'm going to add to the list here right before we move on is uh, third-party app support. You know, on that. Um, um, APIs, because A-Train the, the had a, a thing about it. He's like, hey, remember when they made the announcement? They were showing, like, ServiceNow yes. and, like, you know, Dynamics and all this stuff that, yep. like, never came out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they've got, they've got those hero partners that have built um, yeah. loop adaptive cards that bring that content in. Mm -hmm. um, and it's live and it's built exactly. on the fluid framework, but yeah, we need to see yeah. more of that. Yeah. Okay. So on to the delighters, um, for, for me, I, I think the thing that really like whenever you compare loop against notion, things like that, the, the things that stand out here in the middle for me with like what makes, what differentiates Microsoft is one being able to at mention those files, like it's aware of your files because the it's in the graph, you know, it because it has access to the Microsoft graph, it knows about the people, it knows about the files, it can recommend them in an intelligent way. And then also those being able to put that component wrapper around something, share it out via Word or Outlook or Teams or Whiteboard, that's kind of the real powers. Like it's not stuck inside of the loop application um, or a link to it on a web page. It's it's in the flow of work. It's in the context of where you already are. Um, we mentioned the focus on accessibility, you know, and the kudos for that around like encouraging alt text, things like that. And then mine at the, the bottom here is those page templates. I just wanted to show what those look like. So when you create a new page at the bottom, they've got a few provided for you. Like, is this a project brief? Are we getting to a decision? Is it a project plan or is it meeting notes? So if you're taking notes in a workspace for a meeting, you just click meeting notes and then use this template. It's got the, the date, it's got the topics, the attendees of who's there, the agenda. So everybody can collaboratively add like what they want to talk about, how long it's going to take, take your notes and capture your action items and your link. So it's like what I had over here in Notion. I've got the same basic components here. They've they've got that. It's just kind of you know you're scrolling up and down, which was my minor complaint. But As you boy, they make it look beautiful with that yeah. template. John, just go through and create another one or or undo mm -hmm. it. So yeah. uh, something else about that is you click on it, it gives you a preview of what it looks like. You can yeah, then and you choose can clear it. content. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and now you've got now you've got your oh, template. it blanked it out. Yeah, 
Yeah. That's a good tip, Daryl. Thank you. So and yeah, it had a bunch of fake data well. in it. Yeah. So I was able to say like, use this template and it's got a bunch of fake stuff in here, clear content. And now that table's empty. Yep. Oh, that's a godsend. Thank you. That's cool. There's, there's more <laughs> templates just at the bottom. I, I, that's a, a Oh, there's other to, ones too. Yeah, I did yeah. not. Oh man, dude, there's a lot more. Okay, so there's 10 right now. There's mm -hmm. a project brief, and this is good. This gives you a, a preview of what they look like. Team decision. Here's Let's get focused on one thing we're going to solve, and then what we're going to compare, we're going to vote on ideas, come up with a decision. Project planning. Meeting notes. We looked at that one. Bad idea brainstorm. Build a terrible food delivery app. <laughs> what? What? Um, that's awesome. Product wiki. There's your wiki that then you could share as uh, you know, read only action heroes to assign team members to take action on tasks. So this would kind of be like a backlog buster type of thing, you know, stand up meeting. So there's your like, here's what we're doing. Here's the updates, action items, issue tracker, which now you're getting into the world of like Microsoft lists, right? Cause that's also a template and lists is kind of a bug tracker. Then problem framing, let's work down like what's causing a problem. Let's break it down into the parts and get about solving it. Dude, that's rad. That's a pretty good start, in my opinion. Mm. I so like much that. that dropped in the last three three to four weeks before it went public preview. It was just mind blowing yeah. the pace at which like this they stuff were at the end of the appearing. sprint. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, that covers that. Anything else you guys want to cover about the whole app delighter thing? We got a few questions to run through. Um, no, nothing else. I know that this this is going to be an open loop, and we'll definitely have more conversations about it. Yeah, for sure. Um, there, there is one thing I do want to bring yeah, go up ahead, man. on just quick. Um, let me yeah share screen my up. screen real quick. Um, so I've I've been mad. Um, tweeting and throwing the links in the in the chat yeah <laughs> and in one of the blogs um microsoft mentions the storage for the loop components and it provides a link to basically office.com slash my content and i'm i feel like we kind of skipped over this a little bit because we were concentrating on like the one drives and share points of the world but in my content like when we drill down into that um there's all the different pages and components that we were working with today along with like the, uh, the activity in mm -hmm. there. I know we kind of, you kind of did the filter on the homepage, but this is the specific, my content along the uh, other side there. And the blog article actually called that out specifically. So I just wanted to make sure we got that on the recording and mentioned that here toward the end. Yeah. Okay. Thanks man. So take the screens away here and end it with, I think this is a really fun question. So <laughs> what do you guys think it's going to look like in three, four, or five years as we kind of round this thing out? Andy, told well, about when Copilot co gains um, uh, yeah. awareness and becomes uh, um, uh, alive, uh, I think it's going to use the graph and uh, the Copilot service, and the Loop app is just going to build its own information for me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That sounds pretty nice. <laughs> well, Daryl, what do you think? No, I, I, Expand on that, right? It's, it's yeah, yeah. Add where more. where I would have to go and think, where do I find this and that to to start forming our ideas during this meeting? It's going to be, hey, co-pilot, can you pull this from a product that we're working on, conversations that we've had, um, mm -hmm. reports that are about this, and just pull it together and throw it on a page for us, and we'll start we'll start working from that starting point it'll have that awareness of all of that content and the context of where you're working. So it's going to yeah. be amazing. Yeah. I think if yeah, I could make a prediction, I think, it, I think this is going to end up being the underlying architectural structure for the rest of all of the other collaboration experiences. Yes. I think um, the, Rewrite. the amount of speed, the, the amount of like speed and fluidity um, that, that we have, I think is going to become like the new bar for how yeah. we collaborate for everything. Um, so I, I think that we're going to see sooner than, you know, like three years. Um, I'd be interested also to see like, as this overlays into um, 
like mesh, you know, if there's going to be any kind of like dealing with 3D objects or turning these loop workspaces into drop-in spaces, perhaps, you know, mm. and they convert into like drop-in rooms that you can collaborate in. And, you know, are we going to try to like merge a virtual spatial world with this, you know, canvas area and have that be together that maybe like the, the assets that are in the room, the whiteboard, the presentations, those things kind of like all dump into a collaborative canvas loop could be an underlying like canvas for that. It's almost like the conference table, right. That you spread everything out on. Yeah. Um, that's just kind of a wild thought for years in the future. Uh, you, you mentioned about like how it will extend into other apps. I'm hoping that mm -hmm. the office applications will get a rewrite and they'll become fluid native. So underneath it, imagine being able to not just insert a component, but the word document itself is turn this paragraph that I've typed up in full experience word into a component so I can share just that with, with people. Mm -hmm. So everything becomes fluid capable. That would be something. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I think that was a really good question to kind of end things out on. Um, and it's, it's been a long time <laughs> for this, this live stream. So I did want to point out again, um, you know, thanks a lot, Daryl for joining us, especially on your Saturday morning for more than two hours. Um, everybody who's watching scan this QR code, uh, and follow Daryl. He talks about loop all the time. Um, his YouTube channel is fantastic. There's a link to his YouTube channel from his Twitter account. So, um, be sure to follow him there and, uh, thanks a lot for coming by and thanks for I'll all like, the, the I'll, times I'll that you hang out guys. with us anyway, you know, on oh, I love our live it. streams. I, I would be here anyway if you're covering something else because that's yeah, I appreciate my Saturdays it, man. once a month. But uh, I, I also want to say, like, this is this is the power of being able to sit down with the uh, people who are also interested in technology and tease these details out because the the mm -hmm. angles that we think about and the experience that we have about working with people and what they're interested in that's how we truly pull these things apart. And I don't, hope yeah. you don't mind, but also just throw in there, like we do have a Microsoft Loop user group that's on LinkedIn that mm, yes. um, it's it's going to start ramping up now. There's an app there, right? So yeah. go there to, to, to learn about it and talk about your experiences and share some sort of these sorts of conversations that we've had today yeah. in there so we can all learn together. That LinkedIn user group, that the Loop user group, that has like hundreds of users on it already, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, it's up to about 600. Yeah, yeah that's, and... that's pretty dang big. <laughs> Yeah, it's getting That's bigger, awesome, but man. it sort of, you know, understandably died off a little in terms of activity because loop components were, you know, just slowly releasing, slugging yeah. out there. For well, of, but I think it, it got a shot up. in the arm <laughs> this yeah. week. Holy cow. Yeah. yeah, go join that group. Go subscribe to his channel. Go follow Daryl. Um, awesome. Cool. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> so I guess we'll just end it there. Keep the loop open. But, yeah. Thank Stay you guys for, for all the chat. This was really fun and a good time. And uh, Andy and I will see you next month to chat I'll about that link some other to topic. The, uh, I'll grab that link to the yeah. to the user group as well. I'll drop that. Okay, in. cool. Yeah, um, throw that in the chat. I, I can't add it in the chat because I'm not in a studio. Oh, no. Oh, no yeah. It's okay. in private chat, I will so do you it. just grab that and add it. Yeah. I'll do it right there. Okay, so cool. in the chat in YouTube, um, the last thing is that link. So. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it. Take care. Have a great weekend. Bye. Take all. care, everybody. All right. Bye.